Hello, 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 where's the camera? Hello, hello, welcome, 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 welcome. It is Sunday, I hope you can see me and hear me okay. It is Sunday, it is time for Warhammer Sunday. It's the only thing that happens on Sunday that's worth knowing about. Obviously, Chris's stream at eight o'clock as well is also worth knowing about. So it's the second thing worth knowing about. I'll just shut up before I dig that hole any deeper. Not thinking, just talking. Hey everyone, it's Fox and Model Making Doc Guru here. Hello and welcome to Warhammer Sunday. Normally, at the time of weekend when I work on my Warhammer Army, the unending forces of the holy contrivance and principality of Zeon themed uh, Imperial Guard Army. But for the last few weeks, I've been catching up on my Warhammer Conquest builds and getting the builds out of the way because they're piling up. I need to get just all the stuff built and put in cabinets and I can come back to it and paint it later in the year. So we're going to be carrying on with that today. But welcome, welcome. If you've never seen one of these before, <clears throat> I always need to clear my throat after 30 seconds. One moment. I'm an old man, you see, as my voice goes. Yes, I will be talking for three hours straight and um, probably doing a very small amount of work, minimal, minimal amount of work. Uh, but this is a show for you guys. It's more about you guys hanging out and chat and having a good time while I just happen to be on in the background, waffling away to myself, kind of is most of what this is about. So if you're watching this and uh, you can see there's a live chat there, you can see it there. But if you want to join in the live chat with the typey typey, uh, then you need to be on the YouTube channel to watch this. If you're watching this embedded in Patreon or Facebook or the Twitters or the you places or the face apps or whatever you want to where you're watching this, click on the little YouTube symbol that's down here in the bottom right hand corner somewhere. Click on that and that will take you to the YouTube page where you can join in the live chat. And you want to join in the live chat because we're going to be giving away stickers later on. That's always a winner. So I hope you can all hear me and see me okay. I'll just quickly check the chat to make sure you're all saying you can see me and hear me. Yes, there we go. Um, so yes, I'll be chatting away. Uh, I do depend on you guys to give me stuff to talk about. So if you are act able to access the chat, then if all you need to do is just uh, shout out a question. Put it. In, I've got the chat here in front of me, but put it in big fat capital letters so I have a chance to actually see it because it goes by really fast. Uh, if you want to, you can use the super chat, which is the little dollar symbol at the bottom of the chat window. That puts your comment in a color box and makes a noise and the animation comes up here and I can't possibly miss it that way. And that's all happiness there. Or if you can't get access to that at all, you can, if you want to, send me an email. My email address is permanently here, fox at modelmakingguru.com. Uh, it's not guaranteed I'll get the... I forgot, I forgot, Guthorm. It's not guaranteed I'll get the email during the show, but I'll get it, but I'm not guaranteed I'll read it, but it's always worth a try. So, yeah, you can mail me if you want to. Now, don't forget, as always, we do have our stream boss battle, uh, which is where you guys can have a chance to win up to what, three to five hundred quids worth of uh, Warhammer or Forge World stuff. Kevin Reynolds, Kevin Reynolds, Cy Reynolds, or Kevin as we know him, is our current stream boss. It says me, it says model making guru, it's not me. I, I pressed the wrong buttons, so that's why he's called Kevin. So Kevin is the current stream boss. Um, you basically whittle down his health, and if you get him to zero, not only do you become the new stream boss, but you also win all the money raised through getting him to zero. Basically, to get his health down, you either do a super chat in the chat window, which is the little dollar symbol. Uh, you can like and subscribe to this channel if you're not already subscribed. <coughs> that takes a tiny amount of his health off or if you want to you can put a tip through the tip jar which is uh, streamlabs.com forward slash model making guru now the more you put through as a tip or the bigger super chat you put through the more of his health you take off and all that money raised goes into a big pot and if you become the new stream boss you win basically that pot i will tell you how much you've got you tell me what you want to order now i've changed things up a little bit Announcement time. Um, as you all know, I am now supported by Goblin Gaming. You can see the little icon up there. Oh, that really bright light on my finger. Look at that exploding. My hand's exploding. I'm now supported by Goblin Gaming. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, an awesome store where you can save 20% off RRP when you buy your Warhammers or other things. Uh, the good lads at Goblin. Uh, and uh, I'm extending the, if you win the stream boss, uh, you can order through, at the moment it's up until now it was whatever you win, you can order stuff through Games Workshop or Forge World to the value of however much you've won. I'm extending that to include uh, Goblin Games. They do offer 20% off RRP on all Games Workshop stuff. So basically if you win and you're in the EU, it is limited a bit. You've got to be in the EU where they ship to. Uh, so you can order basically through them instead. I'll order stuff for you uh, on your. Basically, I'm ordering stuff on your behalf. Uh, there may or may not be a shipping charge depending on how much you win, but it doesn't. It won't be that much, but you will be saving a lot of money. So if you do win, now you've got Games Workshop, Forge World, or in certain locations, uh, Goblin Games, where you can order all your stuff from. So happy days! Remember, it doesn't have to be Games Workshop stuff through 
uh, goblin games you can be anything you want so there you go so three places now if you do become the new stream boss where you can order from like i say i am now supported this whole channel is now supported by goblin games i do have to thank the guys i went to see them on monday they're a really really nice bunch they don't just sell Warhammer, they sell all kinds of stuff. They've got Games Workshop stuff, you know, Warhammer and Sigmar. They've got Malifaux, they've got Star Wars Legions, they've got Pokemon, they've got Yu-Gi-Oh! I think I pronounced that right. They've got Magic the Gathering, they've got, they've got tabletop games, they've got card trading games, they've got tabletop card games, they've got tabletop board and like Monopoly type, you know, proper tabletop Catan type stuff. They've got loads and loads of stuff. And they do offer 20% off RRP. So I will be pimping them a bit because obviously they're now my channel supporters. They have very kindly provided me with an affiliate link, which I shall copy and paste into the chat for you now. Uh, if I can remember where it is. There we go. Uh, so if you would like to save yourself up to 20% and at the same time support this channel, because I make a tiny amount off that every order put through that link. And um, if you want to save yourself some watch and help this channel out a bit, help me earn an income, you can just make that the link you go to when you want to order from Goblin Games. It will save you all that money and I will make a little bit of income off the order you make. So if you need to buy some stuff, check out their site. Go to that link, store it in your bookmarks, go there. It's basically like saying, I sent you, uh, and they will give you 20% off, and you'll also uh, make me a little tiny bit of money. So do save that in your bookmarks and use that from now on. Anyway, it's really warm today. Oh, I'll have a quick look at chat and see who's in. Oh, sweating. Nom, 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 nom. Uh, let's have a look. Let's have a look and see who is in the chat. So welcome one and all. I hope you've all had a good weekend so far. Uh, so as I say, yes, I am really, really happy and I'm proud that I'm finally able to announce that I am supported by Goblin. I did go to see them on Monday and they are awesome guys. There's going to be a lot of stuff coming up in the future. They're building a small studio on their premises like they can do streaming and filming and stuff. And it's like, oh yes, I'm going to be taking advantage of that. So let's have a look. Uh, the first person I've got in chat, the first person in chat was actually Dad. Now, Pascal did say the other day he's going to be away at the moment, so Pascal might not be in chat. So we know we, we know why he's not there. No need to panic. But the first person I have, because chat doesn't go far enough back, is Quanoma. Man. Uh, then Chris at Gross Models and uh, David Butcher, that model, are both in, two of your mods. Uh, Lynn Dipple pops in. She says, Heidi, my friends, we'll have to work today. Have fun. Uh, and she also says, oh, 214, cheese and onion, Warhammer stuff, lol. So hi and bye, Lynn. She can't make it and she's working. Uh, we have Osric 9000, who apparently isn't here. Welcome, Osric. Uh, Raging Bassist, uh, another thing. He says he's having a quick breather in work while stuff is cooling and whatnot. Hope everyone enjoys Warhammer Sunday and have a great afternoon. Hope your foot heals soon, Fox. Later, dudes. Thank you very much, dude. Uh, yes, if you, 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 you probably all know I broke some toes <laughs> on Wednesday. I'll tell you all about it in a minute to clip, blow my nose first. Uh, who else do we have? Dad is in. Uh, Dad is another one of your mods. Dad is a lovely, lovely fella. He'll always see you right. He'll always look after you. But if you cross him, he will break you in half with his little finger. And then he'll just break you in half again into quarters and then into eighths. And he'll go so far as to turn you into decimals. So don't cross him. If you cross him, he'll, he'll just turn you into decimals. Uh, Mordraka09 is in. Evening all. Uh, Edelhar is in. Hello. Welcome, Ed, uh, Ed Hellar. I pronounced that wrong. Ed Hellar. Welcome. If I sound a bit flustered, by the way, because I'm really, really hot. It's really what I open my window like a fool. And now I can't get to the window and uh, it's really warm outside. It was cool earlier on, so the room was cool. Now it's gone really warm and I'm sweating. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, who else have we got in? Just Django says, I'm here too, feeling a wee bit dizzy for some reason. Well, make sure you sat down, Just Django. and Get yourself a nice cup of tea. Nice cup of tea and a biscuit and you'll be fine. Uh, we have, who else have we got in? Uh, Snowman HFC comes in. How's the toes, Fox? I shall reveal all momentarily. Uh, Cynical Bank Steve, afternoon people, welcome Steve. Uh, Richard Gibbs, hello everybody, welcome Richard. George is in, George Gabriel, welcome George. Uh, one of my patrons for whom this is being done, but you'll see about that in a moment. Uh, Jamie Bone is in, hi Jamie, how are you doing buddy? Uh, I'm going to guess you're having roast chicken dinner and you're going to be watching the cricket. I'm going to guess that. Uh, let's have a look. Beyond Hope is in, afternoon folks. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Who else do we have? Mm -hmm. uh, Beyond Hope has just bought a 3D resin printer, trying printing his first miniature. Be ready in three hours. Do, 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 do. Let's have a look. Beyond Hope says, Dad, did you look at those 3D printable tanks for Warhammer 40k link last week or the one before? You just need to buy lots of Bane. You don't need to print your own tanks. Just buy all the Bane blades. Just buy lots of Bane blades. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. That's all you need to do. Yes, I did buy a Bane blade this week. 
Uh, Candy Graham from Mongo is in. Welcome, Candy Graham. Uh, has Fox's mug got little feet on them? Uh, no, that's just a, it's a placemat underneath. <laughs> Let's have a look. Do, do, do. George Gabriel says, Gobbler should sell to the US. I would buy all the things. Yes, they don't, they don't currently ship to the US, unfortunately. Although I'm sure if you, if you ask them, uh, I suppose it depends what you're ordering. If you give them a shout, they don't list it as somewhere they can ship to. There are certain restrictions, I think, as well with Games Workshop stuff as to where they can ship it. So it may it may be that some things they can ship and something they can't. But the best thing to do is to drop them a line. If you're ever not sure, there is a list of the EU, EU countries they ship to on their website. But drop them a line or give them a, well, don't give them a call, but drop them an email and say, hey, I'm in this country. Can you ship to me? Here's what I want to order. You can only ever ask. Uh, Cynical Mank Steve says that Goblin Gaming Store has many things that will take my wages at the end of the month unless I have willpower. You have no willpower. This isn't the willpower you're looking for. Nim Sindarin is in, alive but not completely awake. Uh, let's have a look. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, Jamie Bone talking about Gumpler. Nim Sindarin talking about Gumpler. I've lost the thread of the conversation there. Dad says woohoo. George Gabriel has gone back to choring. Okay, George, enjoy your chores. Uh, Christopher Porter, welcome, Christopher. He says, first time watching live for me. Welcome, you're more than welcome. Uh, Gross Model says, reveal all ew. Everybody's saying welcome, Christopher. Red Len is in. He says, after now, afternoon all, out today, currently in queue at Burger King. Oh, I'm jealous. We don't have a Burger King local to us. It's really a pain in the bum. I love Burger King, but there isn't one local. It's a pain in that backside. Right, so I think I've caught up with the chat. So if I have missed you, my apologies. Hello to everybody. Um, don't forget, of course, uh, this stream is nothing to do with uh, my sponsors, emodels.co.uk. Um, so I don't care if you swear a lot in the chat. You can use real words. You can swear. I need to wipe my nose again. I've got a real sniffly nose today. Uh, you can swear. You can use rude words. Just don't be a complete spoon. No politics or religion, please. Don't be bullying anybody. Uh, but yes, you can be grown up and use swears if you want. I won't read them out, of course. So if you want to make sure I read your comment out, don't put lots of swears in it. Uh, now, there is a very important question that Dad has to ask. I shall wait. Somebody's already answered it. Do, 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 do. Uh, Beyond Hope says, isn't there an app on your mobile where you can order Burger King for home delivery? Yeah, there's things like Deliveroo and stuff, but my nearest Burger King is Warrington, which is like 20 miles away. Or hundreds of miles away, so yeah... Uh, butcher that model says, I'm not looking at the screen for a bit if Fox is going to get his hairy. You're not going to see my feet, don't worry. Yes, so uh, this week, this Wednesday, I, bro I broke two toes. I had to go to hospital. I was like, yeah, you've broken some toes. I'm like, oh, bugger. So, yeah, so uh, I was basically, uh, uh, Mama Fox ordered a big six foot long pair of secateur shear things because we've got some bramble growing in the garden. It grows in the wild patch at the end of the garden, which is fine. It can do what it wants there. But it was also growing around the back of the pond. And I don't like it growing around there because that's just it just takes over the pond and it just ruins everything. So we got these big six foot long secateur things so I could hack away at it and pull it all out, which was fine. Except I fell over while I was doing it. I kind of slipped on a bit because it's near the pond. The ground was a bit damp. Now, I have to say, this bramble was a mighty bramble. It was a truly mighty adversary. A great battle ensued. Um, and I, I won just. There is now a big pile of bramble. Some of the some of the things I pulled out. Some of the, the tendrils were like twelve foot long. It's like wow, this is pulling it like this. God, how long is this thing? But I did slip and I, I hurt my foot. And you're not thing where you you stood there and then the next thing you know you you're on your ass on the floor and you're like wow that didn't go according to plan. So I picked myself up and my arm was a bit sore and my both knees hurt and my, both my ankles hurt. But then they all kind of faded away and I cracked on with the work. Uh, and I had to take Mama Fox into hospital that day for a checkup. So it was like, oh, my foot's a bit sore, but well, I'll drive you. So I drove Mama Fox to hospital and drove back and we wandered around the hospital all day. And it was like my foot was a bit gripey. And it was a bit of a, putting it on the, on the clutch pedal was like, ow, ow, bit sore here, bit stiff. Uh, then on the way home, we decided to stop in at Tesco's and be really, really classy and have dinner. We went, we went out for dinner, basically. We, had a, we went out for a smart Ponzi dinner, but we were actually in Tesco's cafe, so it wasn't like wasn't like classy. But we had a fry up in Tesco's cafe. That was quite nice. And got home, and my foot was giving me some jip. And then I was walking up the stairs, taking my shoes off, walking up the stairs. And you know, sometimes when you go up the stairs, and you've got the stairs there like that, and your foot just goes bunk into the front of a step. It did that. 
I was crippled in agony. I was, I was like, oh, it's, oh, it's painful. So I thought at that point, I thought I've done something to my foot. I'm going to have to get it checked out. So I went to A&E, had it checked over and the woman was like, oh yes, I can see straight away. I'm not going to x-ray it because you've got two broken toes. Bound it up. There you go. Don't be an idiot. Go home. Get your foot up. Stay, keep the weight off it. So that's it. So I've now got to sit around and limp about for the next three or four weeks. It's, um, it's a bit of a major pain, really. Let's be honest. I've basically been wearing, because she said, have you got some like soft, um, have you got some soft trainers? And I'm like, no, I've got literally a pair of work boots or these Converse sneakers that I'm wearing. And she went, well, okay, you need to put something on there just to protect your foot. So basically for the last Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, for the last five days, I've had one sneaker on, on my left foot, which is the toes are damaged. And that has to, st I take it off occasionally because I looked at a foot breathe, but I have to keep it on to keep my foot protected. And for the most part, it's not actually too bad. I'm getting more mobile now. And as long as I don't move my toes, because they're bound up, as long as I don't move them and wiggle them, they're actually not so bad. So it's not that bad. I do kind of ham it up a little bit for drama purposes, but you know, it's not so bad. So yeah, so I've never broken toes before. And my God, did I feel like a spoon? I don't know. Uh, right, so let's have a quick look at the chat dad did ask the very important question which of course is what's on your bench and what's in your belly if you know anything about me any stream that i'm in any time that's always a question that gets asked what's on your bench so what you're working on right now uh, and what's in your belly so either what have you had for your dinner or what you're going to have for your dinner depending on where you are in the world and i've forgotten where the camera is is that let me i need to make a mark hang on hang on i need to make a mark so i know where my mark is hang on let's make a little mark one second i can't cut this bit where is it there it is Need to make a little mark so I know. Because I always move the camera and I've stuck that to my finger. Oh. Uh, camera is, where's the centre? It's about there. Right, there's the camera, Fox. That's what you're talking to. You're talking to this. I'm talking to a tiny triangle. You're all in this tiny triangle, all of you. Uh, let's have a look. So everybody's welcoming Christopher. Uh, Dad tells Nim to get the coffee so she'll be okay because she's not quite awake. Chris says he'll have a bacon burger. Uh, all I can think about right now, right now, is Burger King. Uh, Jamie Bowen answers the question before Dad asks it, which is why I said somebody already answered it. Jamie says on his bench and belly, bench is FX 172nd B25 Mitchell. Oh, it's going to be big that. Uh, and the belly is soon to be a roast chicken and baked potato sandwich. I called it. I, I knew. I, I thought it'd be a roast chicken dinner, but I did say roast chicken. Roast chicken sandwich and baked potato. Oh, sorry. Roast chicken and baked potato sandwich with jam. Wait, hang on. A roast chicken and baked potato sandwich with jam and custard. I'm not. I'm not saying that's wrong. I would eat it, but I don't. I, I must have misread that. And Yorkshire pudding. Any Yorkshire pudding. I don't understand. <laughs> um... Uh, let's have a look. Fox fell off something. Shock, says Chris. Chris. I didn't actually fall off. I just kind of... I was on flat ground. And then I wasn't. I was I was literally vertical on flat ground. And I was horizontal on fat, flat ground. Um, and it was that moment where, for just a second, you have like the... You get the, the soreness here, where you land on your on your on your palms, and I had the a twisty like ankle and stuff. But that went away. I was there making a few swears, and I was basically swearing at the bramble because I knew it was the bramble's fault. And uh, they faded, and I was like, "Okay, everything's fine. Let's carry on." Uh, let's have a look. Chris says, "Team inept." Hashtag like and subscribe. If I, yeah, I'm a member of Team Inept. If I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it ineptly. Uh, Nim says, oh, it jumped. Hello, wait. Nim says, bench, tiny peoples, and I think she's doing some 100 scale figures. I'm painting wood grain on the base of my Shin Musa and belly barbecue Frito twists. Yeah, Nim with her snack foods at this time of day on a Sunday, always. Uh, David Butch, that model, is he's eating chicken nuggets in the belly. Well, in the belly. Uh, and he's working on the uh, Warhammer 40k Orc scrap jet, scrap jet on the bench. It looks mint, that. My plan is I've been buying, um, I've got a couple now, I've got the, I've built the Rooker Truck Squig Buggy, I've not painted it yet. I built the Rooker Truck Squig Buggy and I bought the Boom Dacker Snaz Wagon and I like the look of them so much. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be buying over time all the all, the new Orc vehicles that came with the Speed Freak set. So the Boom Dacker Snaz Wagon, the Rooker Truck Squig Buggy, there's the Scrap Jet Thingamajig, there's the Bing Bang Wobbly Thing Wizard and there's this, all of them, I can't remember the names. Uh, I'm going to get them built and get them painted up and sell them as a, as a unit, sell them as a, as a thing, because they're just awesome. I want to build them, but I don't, I don't have an orc army. So uh, let's have a look. 
Cynical Mag Steve says, Cheap toy being turned into a cyberpunk pistol on the bench. Good, we like Cynical Mag Steve's uh, kit bashing and conversions. And bench and food is sausage, mash and five onion gravy. <gasps> is that, wait, five onions in the gravy or five different types of onion? It, either way, it sounds fantastic. The number is a good, it's a good, good number to have in gravy terms. Soon to be in the belly. Uh, more Draka says, belly, coffee, 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 coffee. I assume that's coffee and not tea. Bench, uh, Games Workshop, Fine Cast Minis, Tyranid Hive God, Orc, Ogre Kingdoms, Tyrant Bruiser. How are you finding those Fine Cast? Every time I mention Fine Cast, people swear a lot. Yeah. Uh, so let us know how you're finding those Fine Cast. Because I, I've read that Fine Cast aren't quite as good as Forge World. And Forge World aren't quite as good as kind of anybody else. So do let me know how those are going. I've got some uh, Forge World Death Guard of Death, Death Court of Krieg to build at some point. Gross Models, Chris at Gross Models has eaten pizza and is working on a real grade Cesabi. You can work out which one is which. Uh, Beyond Hopes has a pair of large secateurs. Does that make Fox Major Stabberty? No, I'm Captain Stabberty. I'll always be Captain Stabberty. But it's like a, they're like a big pair of secateurs like this big. I'll, I shall draw a picture so you can see with your brain and your eyes. Uh, we have basically, and it's kind of frustrating because they're a great design, but you've got, you've got these big secateurs, right? So you've got <clears throat> like two long poles like that. And then the mechanism here and some big snippy secateurs at the end. <clears throat> and there's like a ratchet mechanism. Now these are telescopic and they start off that long and they go to about six foot. But the problem is to get these to open, they've got the ratio in the ratchet wrong. So to get these to open, you kind of have to open them to like almost 90 degrees which is not humanly possible if you're a typical human with like you know a six foot arm span so it's a good design they're really awesome to use because i like snip tree falls down it's great snip half a house falls off and they're quite manly but yeah you have to kind of open them 90 degrees it's a bit of a bit of a dis they could have worked on the lever there a bit worked on the ratchet and the and the fulcrum i like the word fulcrum but never mind uh Dad uh, is working on, uh, well, he says, Sunday roast in the belly, good girl, and a knight valiant is about to appear on the bench. I'm going to guess it's going to be red. Yes, Dad got himself a knight valiant. You'll in, if it's, it's his first imperial knigget. So, Dad, you're going to love it. Do watch Duncan's How to Paint Imperial Knights tutorial. It shows you how simple it can be. It's really, really simple. If you just want to do a real, I mean, you, you can do a lot better than that. You go a lot more with the weathering. But if you just want to see how he paints like the frames, the, the wardrobe of build, have a look at that. It's a great series. It's only two episodes. It's great to watch. I will at some point film a How to Build an Imperial Knight video and paint. Uh, Candy Graham from Mongo says Belly, in honour of our 20th anniversary I'll be grilling ribeye steaks and broiling lobster tails For the missus and myself tonight Yay, well congratulations on your 20th anniversary Is that, what is that, paper or marble or something? Uh, Spiddy Curator's in, welcome Spid Quanamon has got the 144th Millennium Falcon on the bench And a billion trillion biscuits in the belly Ooh, you fat bloater Fox, get some sandals. The tops will let air get to the healing toes. The soles will support them. Uh, I have some, what they called, sliders, uh, which I was wearing while I was in the garden. Probably the reason I fell over, because they probably slid. Uh, but I've only got, I've got some sliders, and they were all right. Uh, but she said, I need something, I need something basically to completely cover the toe area and protect it from bumps and, and jolts and stuff, which is what my sneakers do. Uh, it's really, it's not really about getting there. It's more just about and not supporting them they're kind of tight but it's more about just for me for me personally medically i don't care but for me it's just about covering up my toes so i don't bang them on the stairs when i go upstairs oh. um i see tea in the mug shame says spid i've already had two of these as coffee i've already had two big coffees this size today this is a liter by the way i've already had two big coffees i can't drink more coffee it would kill me um just Django has an R a Master Grade RX 78 2 3.0 on the bench. Nice. Uh, with a planned sandwich for later. Christopher Potter says Shepherd's Pie for tea and currently working on a Chaos Knight. Good effort. I like the Chaos Knights. I'll have to get one at some point. Uh, I went into my local Warhammer store uh, and the manager Chris was there just taking delivery of the Chaos Knight. So he opened up the box and we had a look and it looks fantastic. But I said to him, I said, I've got, I've got the Renegade set. I've still got two knights to build, so... Uh, Snowman HFC, currently eating homemade chicken and mushroom pizza, just about to find something to work on. Yes. Uh, butcher that model, post up a link to something on Goblin Gaming. However, that won't earn me any income. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't. Let me, that's not going to make me any money, that one, uh, Dave. 
Uh, there is a link. I'll post it in the chat a bit later on. But if you want to go, if you do want to go to Goblin Gaming and help this channel out, I'll, there is a link in the description below this video um, for Goblin Gaming. That's my affiliate link. Um, so if you want to help me out while saving 20%, use the link in the description below or anything that I post up in there. Because using that link will mean that when you make your order, it makes some, it takes a little bit of that money you've spent and puts it in my account. So I make a little bit of commission on that. Uh, if you just use any other link, it won't, it won't do that. So I do thank you, Dave, but that link won't help me out at all there. Uh, let's have a look. Speedy Kuwait has got bench, nothing currently. R1M still sitting. Yesterday was Kindle repairs. Oh, yes. Dad uh, asks, yes. Dad says, is that the affiliate link, Dave? Uh, it's for the scrap jet I'm doing from Goblin Gaming. Price, blah, blah. £30, Goblin Gaming price 24 It's no brainer. Yeah, let me post the link in chat again. There you go. Uh, yeah, if you're gonna, <clears throat> just just because it's it needs to be my affiliate link so I can actually earn a little bit of income. That's just a general link. But I do thank you for posting it though. Uh, let's have a look. Interzone uh, 88, good day Interzone. Says Lamshanks and Primaris Aggressors. Uh, let's have a look. Chat jumped. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Picture time says Nim. Hey. Oh, Cynical Manx says, five types of onion, fox, white, red, spring, leek, and a touch of garlic. Oh, that all sounds fantastic. I like all the onions. Uh, yep, red says, dad will do. Yes, dad's night. Of course, dad's night, we're red. Let's have a look. Gaz Vickers says, on the bench, Redemptor Dreadnought, belly, nothing. You need to sort out the belly scenario. Big slurp of tea. Right. I need to get some tissue because I've not shaved the beard for a while, I've not trimmed the beard for a while, and it's absorbing all the tea, because of course the moustache is absorbing all the tea. Uh, let's have a look. So, what are we working on today then? Well, uh, the Chaos uh, Rhino is finished. I shall get it to show you with my showing hands. I should have got this out earlier, really, shouldn't I? Uh, uh. I finished it off, off camera last week, so that is now done. Uh, unfortunately, I've got my, my doing glasses and I can't see the telly screen. Yes, it's there. Uh, so that's all been done. I've done it in such a way that uh, he is still removable and the top still comes off. So you've got the top there. If I choose to do the interior. Now, I did make the spare cupola and I've made the uh, shouty, shouty Vox casting system and the thing for the missile launcher. I'm going to snag myself from somewhere. The, uh, because I, I built the missile launcher set and it was terrible. It it was horrible. There were too many gaps and seams and it was like, I'm not using that. So I'll figure something out. I want to get the actual proper Games Workshop sprue, not the uh, Chinese printed hachette sprue. So I've got these anyway. Uh, they can be magnetised and put on later on. I have put some bits and bobs on the inside. I put an insignia on the door there and I've got some bits on the side. Because I might paint inside, we'll see. But leaving the roof unglued gives me the option then of A, I can store things inside, which is handy. But B, if I decide to paint the interior, I can show it off if I need to. And to be honest, a bit like the uh, the, the temp, the... Um, uh, a bit like the Torox Prime, you don't actually have to glue this top half on. These these doors on the back are also not glued in. I've just taken them in for now. But yeah, you don't actually have to glue this top half on. If you want to magnetise stuff, you don't have to magnetise it either. That's that's. He's not going to stay on, but I can lift it like that. It's not going to come off. So yeah, if you want to paint the interior and show it off, there you go. So yeah, that's done. I finished it off last week after the show. <coughs> so today we've just got four, four, five... One, two, we've got three or four Space Marine officers to build, which does mean another Inceptor. Eh. I like the Inceptor figures. I can't stand the little clear flight stems. Uh, let's have a look. Beyond Hope says, question, how do Warhammer 40k tanks power themselves? There's no room for an engine or power source. They are engines and power sources. I can't remember what they use. It's, I think it's some kind of fusion or something. I can't remember. Um, but yeah, there there are engines and things. They're just they're not designed to look like there's an engine in there somewhere. You're supposed to imagine there's an engine in here somewhere. Yeah, if you look on the bay blade, there's an engine panel on the back. You can see all the inner workings. I don't know, but I suppose on this thing it will be somewhere. Maybe it's in the in this bit where the wheels are. Maybe uh, or it'll be in built into here somewhere. If you look at the um, Torox Prime, there is a bonnet. 
there's a whole bonnet that you can't open up, so it's probably in there. If you're looking like the Storm Wolf, the flying ship, there's a there's an engine. You can see it just before the crew compartment. Uh, Richard Gibbs says the power of positive thinking. No, that's uh, that's orcs. That's orcs that just believe that things will work and they do. Uh, Bane Blade has engines on the back end, says Dad. Yes, yes, there are. I opened my Bane Blade box. I did when I went to uh, Goblin Games the other day. I got a load of little freebies out of them, which was really nice. Um, but I also bought a Bane Blade. I'm like, I know you've just given me all this free stuff, but can I give you some money while I'm here? Because <laughs> I'm an idiot. So I did get myself a Bane Blade. When I'll get round to building it, I don't know. But what I might do, my plan for the Bane Blade, uh, I might do the Octoblade 81. I don't know. I might just build it as whatever variant I want and leave it at that. I don't know. Depends if I can be bothered magnetizing it. But uh, I'm going to do my Bane Blade as Death Core of Krieg. I've got a squad of 10 Death Core. I'm going to make it a, a Death Core Bane Blade. So it's going to be nice Death Core colors. I've got a sniffly nose again. God damn it. Oh, I apologize. Uh, uh. <sighs> right, so anyway, let's get some dudes done. So we've got some dudes to build. So the first one I'm going to build is, and Dad says, no, build all the variants. Well, I've watched a couple of videos, which, okay, if you don't know the Bane Blade, let's pretend this is a Bane Blade for a minute. What you do is you build basically this bit, uh, and all the variations are just the bit, effectively, on a Bane Blade, it will be basically this piece here and the turrets. So you build up that much on the Bane Blade, it's quite a good analogy actually. But what you do is, imagine there's no interior, you put two little strips of sprue down here to hold these this part in place. And I've watched a couple of videos where they have these pieces of sprue going down, but nobody gives you the measurements apart from Spiky Bits who gives it in dumbass American inches, which uh, this is seven and three sixths and eighth and a thirteenth possibly or something. I'm like, what's well, not? I want centimetres. I'm, I'm European, I need centimetres. So Dad, tell me how you got round that, what that measurement was. I might do the octopus. I don't know. I don't know. I probably will. I probably will. You know me, though. I'll probably just buy eight Bane Blades. <laughs> yeah. Uh, driving now. Too dangerous to watch and we'll drive. Catch up later. Okay, yep. Don't watch and drive at the same time, Red Lamb. <clears throat> Interzone 88 is thinking of ordering Warcry. I like the Iron Golems. Yeah, they do look good, those, actually. Do, do, do. I saw the first advert for Warcry when it wasn't saying exactly what it was. And I'm like, this is going to be a skirmish game for Sigma, isn't it? And yeah, it was a skirmish game for Sigma. It looks great. Uh, right, so we're going to build the Sergeant first of all. So we have one, two, and three. Right, I need my helmet of seeing. There is my helmet of seeing. Uh, one, two, and three. Uh, are these numbered? Yes. Yes. One, two, one, two, three. There we go. Nice. I'm going to use, as always, do I need to? Oh, actually, I can actually use. Are these quite small nubs? No, I'll use my big ones first and I'll clean them up with the god hands. So one, two, and three. Games Workshop always tell you to cut close to the model. But if you've actually ever used the, these Games Workshop cutters, you know they're basically industrial cutters. They just, they'll just mangle the crap out of your plastic. So unless it's a, a connection point where you're not really bothered, I don't recommend cutting right against. If you're using these, I mean, they're good. They're good. These are good cutters, but they're designed for like industrial poop. They're massive, heavy duty. They're not small and delicate at all. So uh, that's not three. That's three. Everything's in the wrong place for the camera now. I do apologise. So I'm not too fussed. Where's that? I'm not too fussed at the bottom of the foot. But I don't want to go right close on the leg there. Let's leave that nub on there. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. I never would have guessed that. Never would have guessed that. Four, five, six, and indeed seven as the next parts. So we'll need a little bit of clean up on these when we've got them off. So how is everyone? I hope you've all had a good, a good uh, weekend. Had a good week coming up and a good weekend this weekend. Like I say, I've had a busy week. Was a goblin on Monday. Uh, Mama Fox's checkups on Wednesday and obviously my own. It was annoying because we like we were at the hospital all afternoon for Mama Fox's checkup. And I had to go up and it was like, right, I'll go back now then, shall I? <laughs> I've broken all my toes. So I was there most of the day. It's a nice hospital, but it, I didn't want to be there all day. 
but hey, what can you do? Uh, now again, as always, this plastic is not GW plastic. It's the GW sprue, uh, and if I remember rightly, this is from the Dark Imperium box set. It's one of the sprues, could be. Um, but it's by no means produced in Nottingham at Games Workshop headquarters. It's 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 got lovely detail, but it's that same more it's like soft like butter but more crispy and crackly it's really hard to explain it's very strange stuff blue chinese plastic is brittle says interzone yeah exactly that's it it's it's kind of softer when you're scraping it with a knife but more brittle when you're cutting it so we'll quickly tidy up these nubilations nubilations again i've got no guarantees how much i'll actually get done today probably very little so we'll get these snipped off I think what else has been going on this week? Yes, yeah, so I do have a Bane Blade now. It's been added to the stash of things to do for my army. I'm going to do it as Death Core, I think. Because uh, I was debating what to do it as. I've not decided on the final colour scheme for my Imperial Guard yet. As you know, I'm doing a Principality of Zeon themed Imperial Guard army. Uh, what else have I done? I have stripped down my Tempestus Scions back down. and They've been reprimed. So they're all primed and ready. I need somewhere to put the bits in. They're all primed and ready for painting. Uh, it'll be the third time I've painted them. <laughs> it will be the third time I've painted them. Because every time I paint them, I make a mess of it or do something dumb and it goes wrong. So we shall see. Uh, so I think I might make it. I've got my Death Core dudes. I think I'll make it a tank for them. Now, with my Death Core, I think I would. I'm not going to vary too much from the Death Core colour scheme, I think, for the Death Core dudes. Because they are. I suppose if you know the the fluff I made up, it's hard to explain, but I think I might just keep the Death Core as Death Core because they're just badass. You don't really want to change them to anything else, really. All my all my troops will have their own custom colour schemes based on the fluff that I made up in my brain. It's the on theme. So I've done some Space Marines who look like they're in the colour scheme of Zaku's. I've got an interior, uh, interior Knight, not an Interior Knight, an Imperial Knight, painted up like a Zaku. So it's all beaten and battered. Doo -doo -doo. My scions are going to be painted in a red and white colour scheme to mirror Char's uh, uniform. So they'll be like almost like Char's personal guard. Mm, it's a really nasty nub right on the top of his hand. Thanks for that. Well, then again, it's not that bad. So we're just getting these quickly nipped down. Uh, just a little bit, then we'll, we'll knife them and sand them in a moment. This is just to get rid of any major nubbage. The reason I didn't go in with these god hands straight away is because have you seen how much it costs to get god hands in the UK now? Pfft, yeah, I'm not. I'm not risking these on big chunks of Games Workshop nubs. There we go, that's that bit. I don't know how much we'll get done today, we shall see. Probably not much. Oops. Uh, I'm trying to think what else has been going on this week. Not a lot. Not a lot. Oops. Come on. There you go. Nub be gone. I'm <laughs> um, trying to think of something to talk about. It's actually quite hard. Right. So that's them done. Let's put these back in there. Now it's time for some knife action, so prepare for stabity. I'm sure it will happen. Um, let's have a look. Don't need the measurements, folks. Just place the turret on, on and apply the sprue wonder with a bit of tet. Let me read all that again. Place the turret on and apply the sprue wonder with a bit of glue, and then remove the turret and test. And the, yeah, but how do you put the? How do you? What you're saying, Dad, is my brain says you're saying put this bit on there and then put the sprue underneath it. How how do I do that? I don't I don't under, I don't understand what you mean. I'll figure it out. Don't worry, I'll figure it out. I'm sure it'll be actually quite easy. I might do. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> uh, somebody asked me about uh, Jimmy Bones says apparently in the Greater Manchester in Cheshire there was a tornado. Fox, did you hear anything about this? Um, yes. It was literally within miles of my house, but 
we didn't even get a whiff of it here. It's like I was, it was a, at some point during the day, it started raining a little bit. Uh, and then later on, apparently not more than a few miles away, people's roofs were falling off and children were being blown into the sea and trees were going off into space. And I was like, really? We just, we got a little bit of a rain shower and that was it. So it was obviously very, very localized. <clears throat> uh, doo -doo -doo. Dad says, didn't see or hear or feel at this side of Cheshire, Jamie. Mind you, it's always windy when I'm around. Literally, I'm a mile away from where it happened and we didn't even know that it happened. Dad says, I broke one of the tips on my god hands. I don't know how. Probably because you were using the tip. Don't ever cut from the tip. If you can avoid it. Sometimes you have to, if you have to, you have to. But they're very brittle. And it even says in the packaging, don't cut from the tip. You have to cut from the middle. So it may just be you've just caught it as you've cut something. And maybe like that, Dad, maybe. Uh, Nim Sindarin says, model making guru, what is your favourite kind of pie? Well, now you're asking a question. You're asking a Brit a question. So you have to understand that to a Brit, pie is something with meat inside it not to a brit apple pie is not a pie apple pie is more like a tart so to to me a pie is like steak and kidney beef and onion cheese and onion meat and potato hunter's pie chicken pie um i love all kinds of pie unfortunately i can't eat any kinds of pie i don't know why but over the last sort of four or five years i've developed an intolerance to pie crust which is really annoying. I, just, I love pie. Steak and kidney pie would be my absolute favourite. Beef and onion pie maybe second. Uh, chicken and vegetable type pies are fine. Farmer's pie is brilliant. Simple things like cheese like um, cheese and onion pie. Yeah, boring. Not interested in that. There's no meat in it for a start. Um, but yes, over, over recent years, maybe the last four or five years, I used to eat pie all the time. It's nice, but now if i eat pie now all i get is within an hour of eating it i just get heartburn and acid from hell for like all night so i just can't eat pie anymore and it, it makes it makes me very sad i can still eat puddings like steak and kidney pudding and stuff with the suet suet pudding casing i can eat that no problem that's brilliant not a problem at all but pie crust i can't do it i could probably get away with the fluffy phyllo pastry type pies with the delicate kind of you know Fluffy pie crust, probably get away with that, but proper thick, stodgy pie crust. Can't do it anymore. Sadly, don't know why, maybe I'm just getting old. But yeah, acid from hell. The moment I eat any pie crust pastry, it's like, oh, acid. Okay, so I'm just getting rid of here uh, the remainder of the nub, which is very small now, and the obvious seam line, which goes down. That's not that obvious. Oh. The obvious seam line that I can't actually see. There it is, there it is. Obvious seam line. Do let me know if my head gets in the way, but I'm kind of stooped down to to see this. So I've also got my glasses in the wrong place. So there we go. Do, 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 do. I've been making uh, one of the things I came away from Goblin Gamer with was a sprue of. Uh, Imperial Guard they gave me I, I said in, if you haven't watched the video go and watch the video the announcement video but they did give me while I was there they said let's give you some stuff and they went to their we broke all these things shelf in their office all the stuff they've like opened and taken bits out or something they basically stuff they can't sell and they just picked out a load of stuff and gave it to me and uh, one of them was an Imperial Fist pack it was like the not, the, not a bit like a start collecting set but it's not start collecting it was Imperial Fist uh, sorry, Imperial Fist, Imperial Guard. Um, no, Imperial Guard, Emperor's Fist. That's no idea what I'm talking about. Which is basically a Chimera and 10 Imperial Guard units. Uh, but they've taken out all the Chimera parts, obviously. So it's just the Imperial Guard guy. So I basically got a squad of 10 Imperial Guards. Like, yeah, mint. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Uh, so I was building them and I'd forgotten because I haven't built any for a while. Compared to, say, these guys with their nice, delicate seam lines, I'd forgotten how seam liney. And all those those moulds actually are. It's like, by God, It'd take me forty five minutes just to build each to build each figure and clean it up and build it. Right, I need to change my glasses because I'm too far away from my reading glasses. 
Let's try it with this way, shall we? That's better. I can see now. I can see what I'm doing now. Uh, yeah, but the guys at Goblin Games are fantastic. They're not they're not far from me, to be honest. They're quite local uh, in Northwich. Uh, it's not just a store. They've got the walk-in store, obviously. Uh, but they also have a very large gaming area. If you if you if you can get to Northwich easily, if it's not too far away. And if, uh, since I announced this, quite a few people in the boom hut, my followers, have said, "Oh, I go there all the time." Um, they've got a large gaming area, tables set up, and it's not just it's not just Warhammer. It's lots of other stuff. It's like Monday nights, I think, are Dungeons and Dragons nights. Uh, they have Pokemon nights and Yu-Gi-Oh and things like that. All those kind of bits, Magic the Gathering nights. Uh, and they are planning on, well, they are developing, uh, you know, space into, say, a, a studio for bat reps and for filming and stuff. So hopefully going forward in the future, obviously at the moment I'm kind of tied up with my Cesarbi and the Millennium Falcon that will be coming up afterwards. But hopefully going forward we'll have a bit of collaborations with them. They're lovely guys. We'll have a bit of a laugh with them, I think. There we go, that's that. Nice and clean with no seam line. Uh, have I got another nub on there? No, I don't think so. Not too fussed about the bottom of the foot because that's going to be glued to the base anyway, so I don't really care about that. I want to make sure there's no obviously visible seam line. Because <laughs> there's nothing worse than finishing a wonderful paint job on a figure and going, oh, big ass seam line down one foot. Because the thing is, it's guaranteed, whenever you do that, whenever you notice a seam line that you missed, it's always when you've taken a photograph of it for Facebook because it's finished. Yeah. Uh, let's have a look. I didn't know there was photo etch available for the one, one uh, for the 144th Falcon, says Cranaman. Nice. That says Candygram, sorry. Uh, the Bane Blade is huge. There's loads of room. If I'd done it, anyone can, Fox. I'm sure I'll figure it out, Dad. Dad says, oh no, a pie question, where do we begin? A good pie is one that fits in my massive gob hole, says Quano Man. Chicken and mushroom is always a nice pie, says Fangirl98. Welcome, Fangirl. Yeah, chicken and mushroom is always a, a good choice. Can't go wrong with chicken and mushroom. Pizza pie, if you can find a good baker or patisserie to make them, says Mordraka. It's not something we have over here in the UK. We just have pizza or pie. It's, it's what it, I don't even know what pizza pie is. Is a pizza pie just a roll over pizza? Print Guru says you may oh, welcome dude. He says you may have developed intolerance to vegetable shortening, which is often in pie crusts. Try all butter or lard crust to see if there's a difference. A life without pie is a sad thing, it certainly is. Uh, isn't a pizza pie just pizza folded over, or as Italians call it calzone? It is, says Eons. Yeah. Can't you just get a pizza and just fold it to make your own pizza pie? Hey, it's a nice pizza pie. Uh, other Australians have taken the old meat pie and made a pizza filling for it, says Mordraka. Oh, right, okay. I'll let you off then. That's that. That's good. Pringuri says, specifically, it's the hydrogenated vegetable oils or shortenings that are often used. Could be. I'll have to give it a try. Us Brits love our pies. Daniel Grant gave up mushrooms for Lent. Why? Right, mushrooms are awesome. I can't give up. You know what I gave up for Lent? Nothing. Because I can't, A, I'm not religious, B, I can't give anything up for anybody. Don't care who you are, God of anything, I don't care what, what uh, no. Nothing comes between me and my, I'm in trouble with my glasses here. Nothing comes between me and my food. Somebody comes into my house and demands I give up a food for a religious, for any any purpose, not just a religious reason, but somebody comes and says, I'd like you to give up this food for a reason, I'd be like, I'll, I'll show you to the door then, shall I? No, I give up food for nothing. Nobody comes between me and my my plate. It's not the way things work. It's like all of my friends who've got dogs. Uh, all the dogs, all their dogs have learned. You know, like you go to your friend's house and they've got dogs and you have something to eat. And the dog will sit there and uh, and give you the look as if to say, hey, I know that food you've got there is really nice. So do you want to give some of it to me? And they think you're an easy mark because you don't live there. <clears throat> all my friends' dogs have learnt there's absolutely no point at all giving me the, the, the begging eyes because, I'm sorry, I don't share. When it comes to food, I don't understand what that word means. There is no sharing. 
So they all kind of learn quickly and go, you know what? I'll, I'll just not ask. There's no point. They all know there's no point. Oops. Doodle doodle doo do. Scrapey scrapey. Oops. Get off. Uh, not a lot of sand needed on these. Got a bit of seam lining going on. Haggis and gravy pie with mash, says Snowman. Ooh. I'd only give up mushrooms, tomatoes, and avocado, says Daniel. I wouldn't give up anything. Don't ever give up anything. Somebody asks you to give something up, then they're not your friend. Unless it's like, you know, murder or burning kennels or something that's bad. <laughs> but if somebody asks you to give something up, they're not your friend. Yeah, if they say, hey, you should probably give up murdering, then, yeah, that's they probably are your friend. <laughs> yeah, I'll just stop. I'm going a bit dark now, aren't I? Suddenly went dark there, suddenly. Do, 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 do. So, I'm trying to think of something. I've got no conversation in me today, really. I'm, I can't think of anything to talk about. I'm a bit distracted by the throbbity throbbity in my broken toes, which, let's just be honest, is a bit distracting. Uh, oh, there's a seam line right down the middle of his helmet. Oh. Mind it's a small seam line, so we're forgiven. Oh, it's right near the skull on his helmet, though. Honestly, could you not have put that seam line maybe somewhere else that's not right in the middle of his helmet where all the detail is? That would have been really cool not to have to try and clean that up. Yeah. Uh, okay, seam line there. <laughs> Daniel Grass says, I'm confused if I just started watching a food channel, it's making me hungry. Yes. One thing I talk about on my streams, you'll get to you'll get to realise, but conversations on this stream tend to focus around television, vintage TV, food, or basically anything apart from whatever I'm doing and anything apart from there's not a lot of Warhammer chat on Warhammer Sundays I've got to be honest I ain't no Warhammer expert right there's any other seam lines on there I need to take care of so I'll just give it a quick Sunday Sunday I sent a message to my local Warhammer store because it's their store birthday coming up and because uh, it's a store birthday every year, Games Workshop have like exclusive stuff that you only ever get on the store birthdays. Uh, and this year, there's a primaris lieutenant. I think it is. Uh, is a figure, and that some of the bits and bobs that you can only get on the birth on the, in the store that's having the birthday on its birthday. And uh, somebody contacted me and said, hey, can you, when you go and grab one, can you grab me one as well? I'm like, yeah, yeah, no problem. Should be able to sort that out. But then I broke my toes. So I sent a message to my local store manager saying, hey, dude. Hey, Chris. Um, yeah, I'm not going to be able to make it for your store birthday. Can you, can you hold a couple of the figures back? And he's like, I'm pretty sure that your toes will be working by August, this, August, this, whenever it is, 17th. I'm like, August. And you know, like when I suddenly realised, you know, like when you read a, a, something, and it says in big, bold, massive letters what you're looking at. It says, you know, when a thing happens, and then your brain goes noted and completely not read properly. So, I'd, I'd see the thing saying store birthday August the seventeenth, and I was like, brilliant, so that's July the seventeenth. Yeah, I don't know why. My brain read the word August as July, and I'm that's strange, strange. One thing I want to show you, I forgot to show you. I was going to show you at the start, I didn't. Uh, word continues apace on the... I'll zoom in for you a little bit. Do, 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 zooming in a little bit. Hang on. Word continues apace on the uh, Achilles Ridge Runner. Now, the colours are a bit bleached out here on the telly screen, so it's a bit less bleached than that. Um, but if you're not sure, what, if you're not aware of what I'm doing, I am building for George, who's one of my lovely patrons. 
and building the master grade Sazabi Verkar. And it's going to be painted not only in a uh, in the colour scheme of the Shanghai Dragons, who every week I've joked that they're a terrible team and always come last and they've just won the championship. So, yeah, um, well done. Uh, so it's going to be painted in their colour scheme, but it's also going to be given, if I can figure out how to do it, a Borderlands style paint job. Uh, and this little Ridge Runner is a test pig for the Borderlands style paint job. Not for this kind of bit with the chipping and the painting and stuff, but for what comes to follow, which is going to be the outlining. I've got to do all the ink outlining on this. I've actually got myself a pot of ink and some very fine brushes. And I'm going to see if I can do the outlining. Now, I've, I've gone ahead and painted it. Uh, I've done some I've done some slightly different chipping. Uh, I've, the video has gone up on, uh, on the YouTubes. I have filmed this process. Episode one is up now for patrons. It'll be released for everybody else in the next few days. Uh, but if you're a patron, go on to Patreon, have a watch. If you're not, you can either become a patron, patreon.com forward slash model making guru. The address is there, or you can just wait a few days and it'll come, it'll be released to the general public. So it's, it, I've done some chipping and stuff, but not my usual method of doing chipping. I've done some dry brushing. It's a real simple, simple, basic paint job. I've used some contrast paints for the metallic areas, which came out quite nicely. All the metallics, like the guns and stuff, I realized that if you go and look at Borderlands, the vehicles don't have shiny metallics. There's no shiny metallics in Borderlands, it's all just shades of gray. Um, so I just used the contrast paint, Space Wolves Grey and Griff Charger Grey for the metallics just to get all the different colours. Uh, that kind of war, it kind of gives you a watercolour effect, which is exactly what I was looking for. So it's coming out quite nice. That's the basic brushing done. I now need to try the outline. So on Monday, I'm going to steal myself, do my best sniper deep breath and uh, see if I can do some kind of outlining on this. Because, yeah, it's, it's going to make or break. If I can't do it, then I'm not going to do it on the Sazabi. The reason I've done it on this, because this is a little 25 quid kit. It doesn't matter if I screw it up. I can strip it and repaint it. It's fine. It doesn't really matter. I don't want to get George's £90 Sazabi and suddenly get halfway through and realise I've messed it up because I've done a really bad outline job. So this is a test pig for the uh, outlining technique. So I've got myself some ink with the squishy bit. got to make that noise so that's my task for monday or maybe tuesday is to start trying to do some outlining on that and see what happens so yeah and of course because it's got a rocket launcher it has to be torg so i've put some torque checkers on it because of course i have so i'll put that over there safely so yes that was quite good fun i've enjoyed doing that uh, if i can do this outlining thing i might have to do some more borderland style stuff because it, it's if you look at the Borderlands art stat, it's kind of like watercolour and inks. So the contrast paints for things like metallics work really well for that kind of effect. Go and look at some Borderlands vehicles. There's no metallic, so I could have some good fun with that. It looks a bit like a bandit technical, which is why I'm doing Borderlands. Um, do, do, do. Let's have a quick look at the chat. Uh, giving up is for quitters, says Christopher Porter. True. I'm confused. I've, oh, that's the one I've done. Uh, who's been watching Comic Com updates? Says Snowman. I've only seen the Picard stuff. Mm, people talk about Marvel. I have no interest in Marvel, so I'll just skip over those. Do, 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 do. Uh, Underdog painting. Hi guys, great model, fella. Great painting. Thank you very much, dude. Welcome, welcome. Uh, looks mint that Vox Fox very talky. Says Cynical Mike. Yeah. The funny thing is, right? Here's a handy tip for you. Here's a very handy tip. I know I haven't zoomed out. When you look at this checker pattern and this checker pattern, it looks it looks like really carefully done checker pattern. I'm going to let you into a secret. It's not. It was basically the circular, circular, and it says circular then. I'll show you how I, I'll tell you how I did it and how you don't need to be too careful. Let's get the random piece of card again. Here we go. Here we go. Stand by for action. So here's how I did it. There's the circular thing there. Has some rivets. Regularly spaced. All I did was, I got some Abaddon black and a very I got my small layer brush and I drew a line there. A line there. So between all the rivets basically. Drew some lines. Then, same again. Between, I've not drawn the rivets on, but between the rivets I, I painted on some very faint lines. You have to thin the Abaddon black down a little bit more than normal so it flows like ink. So you've got some very faint lines. All I did was colour them in. Like that with the Abaddon Black. Uh, now at this point, what you will actually have is 
bits where you've gone outside the line and it's not quite straight and that one's a bit wonky and this line's not straight and these squares are smaller than those squares and you might have a bit where you've got like a nice grid and then that one is say half the size and you're like oh fudge you've got a big fat black one or a thin and it'll look pretty mingy what you have to do the trick to doing these kind of checker patterns is it's, a, it's what you never see anybody doing is and i didn't feel me doing it but is the back and forth to tidy it up so you might do this and find that this column of squares isn't quite wide enough so if if i want to make it wider i then start painting over black there or white here or you have to go back and touch in and go along now even when you've done all that even once you've done all that you'll probably still look at it and it will look rough around the edges it'll look um you know there'll be you can say well this looks terrible and that looks rubbish and this isn't straight let me into a secret if you want to make your checkers look less, especially if you're doing orc vehicles, if you want to make your checks and checkers look less badly painted, the moment you do some chipping, so do your black and white or whatever two colours you want, do some chipping over the top. I used um, uh, what the Escape and Blight Dinge. I just brush painted on some splobs to be chips, and then I gave it one quick coat of uh, Agrax Earthshade to dirty up the whites over the whole thing. Uh, and then a quick blast of Space Wolves Grey just around the edges just to bring some colour to it. For some reason, without the shade on there and the wash, those lines would look straight and they'd look rough and neat. As soon as you put a shade over the top and a little bit of a wash and some chipping, some chipping will cover up some mistakes. The shade will blend the black and the white together. It'll soften the edges and it'll suddenly make your hastily painted rough around the edges checks look like neat tidy checks to a quick if you look at it carefully you'll see it but just the simple fact of applying a shade and a, maybe a wash of color over it and putting some chipping over it breaks up it and breaks it up enough that it suddenly looks like a really carefully masked off paint job when it's not it's just brush painted chippings a uh, checkers so if you've got let's say an orc vehicle and you want to do these checker patterns just get yourself a small layer brush and just do carefully outlines first fill them in go back and forth and tidy up if this if the black needs to be wider add some more black you have to go back and it's almost like one of those puzzle games i'll redo that square and suddenly find this one's too thin so i'll do that one there and you'll go back and forth for about 20 minutes tidying them up it'll still look like ass the moment you put a shade over the top and some chipping bam your eye is distracted you suddenly don't see shonky checker painting you see a nice checker pattern so yeah a bit of a handy tip for you there if you if you're trying to make your vehicle look neat and tidy like if you're doing one of the orc vehicles and you're going to do a games workshop paint job where it's not really got any weathering on it yeah you've got to be super precise with your checker pattern but if you're doing weathering and chipping and dirt and dust you can hide a lot of it and it just somehow makes it work so there you go there you go weathering hides all your sins uh, -boo -boo. little runner is very cool fox says jsi Idaho. welcome jsi Idaho. it is now wait till i try and do an outline that might all fall up go to pot there uh let's have a look do 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 like the borderlands theme says it on's car it is nice uh do, 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 do. fox have you seen the youtube video of the breaking bad style coffee maker i'd never actually watched breaking bad so i wouldn't know what that even means i can look it up uh, uh more Draco says beyond hope recipe posted on the boom hunt now what are we posting a recipe for is it something I can eat? Hmm. Anyway, yeah, so that's the that's the uh, Ridge Runner. So once that's done, I'll do the outlining probably tomorrow, just to try it out. And it might take me a while, take me a long time to paint. And then if it all works, I can use that colour scheme and that outline scheme on the Sazabi, which hopefully will be awesome. So that's the current project. So once that Sazabi's done, I'll be on with the perfect grey millennium falc. I need to zoom out, I know, before Dad reminds me. Once the Sazabi is done, why don't I just stay zoomed in a bit? Because it's not like... Yeah, we'll just stay zoomed out. I'll forget otherwise, won't I? Oh, the pizza pie says more Dracker. Okay, yes, feel free to share. Uh, yes. Uh, recipes for noms are always welcome in the Boom Hut. Do, 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 do. Oops. I've got the tea burps. It's not altogether unpleasant. Not altogether unpleasant. Uh, oh, I tell you what, a bit of news that's been going on. I'll tell you what, I have been doing. Um, you know how I like to binge watch stuff. 
Uh, and I've I've kind of I kind of ran out of things to binge watch because I've already watched House like four times. I've watched Bones I think twice now, all the way through all the seasons, all the episodes, uh, and loads of other bits and bobs. I I was on the search for something new to watch, and because I like things like Bones and Castle and stuff like that. Uh, my friend Nikki did suggest that I check out The Mentalist. And I'd, I'd, she told me about it years ago. And I'd, I'd forgotten all about it. And I, I saw it. I was on Amazon having a look around. And it was listed. I'm like, you know what? Let's give that a try. So I tried the first episode. And I'll tell you, I was, I was suckered in straight away. So I'm currently working through The Mentalist. I'm on season three. So no spoilers, please. I don't know who Red John is. Uh, and I actually quite like it. I quite enjoy it. I like the characters. I like Cho. I think Cho's brilliant. Just Cho is so deadpan. He's like, yeah, brilliant. Don't care. Cho, what about this? Don't care. So, uh, yeah, Cho's my man. Cho's my man. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. I also, for the fact he ra ra drives around in a Citroen, uh, 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 what's it? What's the long pointy Citroen that I can't remember what it's called? You know which one I mean. I think they've gone. They've gone a little bit kind of Columbo there, and giving him a, a crazy European car as a trademark vehicle, which is a bit on the nose, I think, really, because it's a bit Columbo with his little whatever he used to drive around in. But I'm enjoying that right now. Doodle do doodle do. -do, -do, -do. Uh, I saw some words on the internet yesterday about The Expanse Season 4, but I can't remember if it was actually a vid. I don't think it was a video. I think it was just general blurb. Looking forward to that. I like me some Expanse. If not for any other reason, it's got the actress with the throaty voice, whose name I can't remember, and the strong accent. She's brilliant. I love her. She's awesome. Do, 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 do. Uh, uh, also, there's a trailer, full-length trailer out for Picard, which looks awesome. I'm liking the look of it. Uh, and at the moment, obviously. Who knows it, whether it'll come out good or bad. Uh, but that looks pretty rad so far. Uh, it makes a little appearance by Brent Spiner as Data. Now, I have to say, I have to say, he's looking a bit podgy in the old face department there. I know he's like 20 years older, but wow. His face looks almost swollen. But I'd, everybody got excited for him being in the episode. And I'm thinking, well, it's only a trailer. I get the impression. I could be wrong, but from the little bit where Picard says, I don't want it to end. And then Data says something. I get the impression that's a holodeck. It's a it's a hollow simulation. He's playing, I think he's playing chess or something. He's doing something with data, and I think he's doing it as a simulation. So I don't know if Brent Spiner will actually be in it. Although he mentions, I don't know, I don't know. It all looks great. Just go and watch it. If you're not if you're not excited by it, then you're just cold and dead inside. Uh, Shora Agladash Lou is her name. Says Fluffy Goods. That's the I can never remember what her name is, but yeah, she's a fantastic actress. Um, and I oh, just love that voice, it's great. The voice and the accent. The character, the ambassador she plays in The Expanse is just perfect casting. Badass and aloof. <laughs> For a long time, I thought, I, I, I was trying to convince myself, I was trying to, I was like, is that the same woman that played the female, um, Founder in Deep Space Nine. It wasn't, of course, but not not for the voice, but for the the, the, the accent. I'm like, is that the same actress? No, it can't be, and it wasn't. I'm always, I'm always, I'll always love a character with a fascinating ac accent. Again, like her, uh, or like uh, like the woman that did play the female founder in DS Nine. She had that strange accent. It's, where she had the sort of soft R's and it wasn't really a, an obvious accent but it was definitely an accent of some sort and she could like roll the R's a little bit and it was like oh, 
great. You could listen to voice like that all day. I've got to be careful here. There's a raised lip on the pauldron, but I've got to get a nub off without taking out the raised lip. And I hate when they put a nub on the pauldron like that. Because the risk is you take out the piping and it'd be an absolute pig to try and replace that. Do 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 do. Yes, yeah, so I'm enjoying the mentalist. Quite good fun. Light-hearted. I think I like. I mean, I love ensemble cast programs. So anything with an ensemble cast like that, Bones. Uh, you know, Bones, Castle, House. Anything with an ensemble cast, I'm going to like straight away. It's going well, to be on a good footing for me to like it because I always appreciate ensemble cast stuff. Um, but then again, if it's a serious ensemble cast, it's a harder sell. Because that doesn't always work for me. I like an ensemble cast where there's a light-hearted feel to it. Again, castle, bones. Uh, and this. So, yeah. But with a serious ensemble cast, that probably wouldn't interest me. Because I'm not really into serious drama. I like to have a little bit of light-heartedness. Sorry, got on. Doodle, 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 doodle. Right, I think that's done. We're going to need to drill that barrel out. Gentlemen, drill your barrels. As you can see, I don't work fast. I really don't work fast. Paul DiTomaso is in. Hey, Paul. Um, Chris says, I told you about the mentalist, says Chris at Gross Models. I know, but my from friend Nikki told me like two years ago as well, to be fair. Uh, made a bit of do. Can't wait to see the first look at the new Warhammer TV series. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Uh, they have announced uh, the guy that made the guy that made uh, Hell's Reach over the last few years. He's doing an animated series, but they have announced um, an, an actual proper TV series called Eisenhorn. It's about Inquisitor Eisenhorn. I don't know the fluff and lore behind Eisen. I know a little bit about it. He's an Inquisitor with the Inquisition. Uh, people are losing their shit about it, so it must be good. But yeah, I don't know if it's going to be live action or CGI, but it's from the guys that made uh, The Man in the High Castle. Which, The Man in the High Castle was really, really good. Now, as it's from the same guy in the same production company... I'm wondering if it's going to be an Amazon Prime. In which case, woohoo, I can actually watch it because I've got Amazon Prime. It's like all the Star Trek stuff. It's CBS. I'm in the UK. I haven't got Netflix. So I have to find other ways to watch Star Trek stuff. So, yeah. But I've got Amazon Prime, so you never know. It might be an Amazon Prime thing, in which case, cool. It might not. But yeah, Man in the High Castle was brilliant. So if it's if it's made with the same attention and passion as that was, and you know world building and ambience, then I'll be well up for that. Do 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 do. But it is in the early stages. It's in one of those stages where there's no even guarantee it'll get even green lit. It's in the development stage, which means right now, Games Workshop have got somebody on board to develop a script and an idea. That doesn't necessarily mean that then it will go from script to pilot and then from pilot to greenlit by a studio or a distributor. It would be nice if it did. There's no guarantee. It might go nowhere. So, but it would be awesome. So I hope that works out. Because if there's one thing that's going to be all, that, that it does cry out for, where's me, where's me thing? Where's me scribing tool? There it is. If there's one thing that Warhammer cries out for, it's actually a decent TV show. Like a proper, you know, seven seasons, 23 episodes a season TV show. Because there's so much potential in Warhammer. 40, excuse me, in Warhammer 40k. You know, that you could easily get something out of it. And it wouldn't have to be necessarily about Space Marines. You know, there's a lot to Warhammer that isn't just Space Marines. You know, you could get you could get a series based set in the Imperial Guard. You could get a series set in any of the 
things. You could get one set, I don't know, in the Inquisition. That'd be good. Like a long-ranging series. So many different things you could set a series in. It doesn't have to be. Just because it's in the Warhammer 40k universe doesn't necessarily mean it has to be set in a... It doesn't have to be about soldiers. Like I say, Eisenhorn's about the Inquisition. So much potential there. I would sit and watch that quite happily. Anything. Now, I did watch Ultramarines, and that was a hot pile of steaming garbage. That was just a complete abortion. I didn't actually finish watching it. It was so bad. I mean, not only for the fact they had Sean Pertwee in it, which is like instant red flag to me. Can't stand Sean Pertwee. Can't stand his voice at all. I'm sure he's a nice guy. But he just... There's hammy acting. Like... When it comes to hammy acting, there's Ricardo Montalban, and then there's just a side of pork. There's too much. Where Sean Pertwee puts on this breathy, soft, over-the-top dramatic voice. He could be talking about cheese. He could be reading the weather report. And he'd be over-hamming it. The pressure is coming over the side. The clouds will build and the weather will fall. We will have rain at least a millimetre in the next six days. It's like, wow, it's, you're just telling me it's going to rain tomorrow. That's, yeah. It just gravels my ass. I don't know why. It just takes me the wrong way. Don't like it. So, yeah, I was like, oh, it's Sean Pert. Oh. I'll sit and suffer, though. And I did sit and, I, and by God did I suffer. Don't watch Ultramarines. 45 minutes in and I'm like... Something's going to happen at some point. Something really will happen at some point. Nothing ever did. There's a little bit of gunfire. I was like, okay, I'm just going to stop now. So I got about, I don't know, an hour in. I'm like, I'm just going to press stop because I can't watch any more of this. It really was. If you ever wondered what a dumpster fire looks like in film form, it, it was a dumpster fire. Uh, ba -da -ba -da -da Get all these nubs done. What time are we on? We're on quarter past four. I shall get all the nubbage done, at least, and then we'll have a quick. Uh, we'll do the stickery giveaways. We'll see where we're at that point. I don't know what I'm having for my tea tonight. Actually, think about it. Oh, uh, 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 beef burgers tonight. Burger and chips, just you know, homemade, not like from a takeaway. By homemade, I mean I put them in the grill. I take them out of the freezer and I put them in the grill. Yeah, it's. <laughs> That's pretty much homemade to me. So yeah, don't don't if you've not watched Ultramarines, just don't. I mean, this is saying something. I'm I'm going to shock some people now, but I would much rather sit and suffer. Well, let's put it this way. Battlefield Earth is a riveting experience and a a cinematographic moment of happiness compared to Ultramarines. You know you've made a bad film when it's not even as good as Battlefield Earth. I mean, holy cow. Ultramarines was so bad. Uh, and like I was saying, the guy that did um, Hell's Reach. I really enjoyed Hell's Reach. I, I did find the, the, the sort of black and white jiggly art style really annoying at first, but towards the end of the project, he started doing more just realistic, still a slightly hand drawn jiggly effect. And it was still a little bit annoying, but it became more color, just standard color effect. And it was like, it was, that was really good. The, the only downside to it was, of course, he was just using the audio from the audio book. And it was that one guy that. <laughs> If you listen to any Games Workshop audiobooks, they have like one guy who does like 90% of the voices. It's a bit like watching a Bethesda game. It's a bit like watching Morrowind, where there's like, oh, you know, Oblivion, where there's like three voice actors. So it does get a bit jarring after a while. Now I've sanded down this little bit of trim on his, on his, on his uh, pauldron here a little bit. So what I'm going to do, I can't bring it back, but what I can do is scribe in a little bit. So I can't make it stick up anymore, but I can scribe in a little line along the edge of it, just to give it some depth so it stands out a little bit more. There we go. It should be alright. 
Okay, I need to catch up with the chat bigly. Heretic, there are only Spes Marines, says Spid. Yes. Uh, uh, just watch the Picard trailer. I think Data may have a bee allergy, says Cranmer. Yeah, he's got this kind of... The left-hand side of his face, it looks like he's a... Literally like a bulldog who's chewed a wasp. He looks a bit puffy on one side. Now, he is old, and he might not be well. He might be poorly. I don't know. But yeah, he's... he's uh, they have to do a bit of space. They've done a good effect. He doesn't look as old as he actually is. They've they've obviously younged him up a little bit with the CGI, and they could write in for some reason why he wants himself to look older because they've got they can't get around the fact that Brent Spiner is twenty years older than he was when he played Data, and even when it came to the last Star Trek movie which he was in, which I can't remember because I blanked it out because it was probably it, it was almost as bad as Ultramarines. Was it Nemesis? Or something? I can't remember. Blanked it out now. Some nonsense it, when he played Beena. Yeah, that wasn't he, looking a bit old even then. So, see, I feel sorry for Brent Spiner because he did such a good job with Data, and he's so closely identified with Data that whenever he plays anything else, I can't take him seriously. I just can't. I can't. It, it's, it's like that's not Data. I don't know. It's just weird. Doodle -doo 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 -doo. I'd like a Mass Effect TV show, says Fluffy Guts. Yeah. <laughs> this is the best weather report ever, Fox, says Quanah Man. What Sean Perthry do in the weather? Low pressure will be coming down from the south. This is very dramatic. There will be a cloud. You must destroy the cloud with all your forces. All I can say is thank God they didn't put Sean Perthry in Game of Thrones, because that would have been instant destruction. Uh, yeah, there's like, when it comes to hamminess, there's Ricardo Montalbon, and then there's Sean Pertwee. Yeah, one of them's good. Okay, this chap with his shouty head. Not a massive seam line on here, but we'll clean him up a little touch. The one advantage of this weird Chinese plastic, I can say it's not... It's not, these aren't made in, in uh, Nottingham, in the Games Workshop factory. And the rumour is that they're made in China, uh, which is fine, doesn't matter where they're made. Um, so the plastic is, like we said before, it's it's it's, it's similar, it's like just as detailed, it's not lost any detail, but it's kind of brittler, brittler. It's both brittler, it's not a real word, it's both more brittle and kind of more soft and pliable at the same time. Which, for things like... For some things, it's a bit of a pain. Like I say, when, you, when you're cutting things apart or anything like that, it's not as handy. When you're trying to sand, perhaps, it's not brilliant. But when you're using the seam line removal tool to get rid of little tiny seam lines, because it's a bit more buttery, it's brittler yet softer at the same time, getting rid of seam lines is actually a lot easier because they just seem to just go away, which is really nice. Right, so that's all them bits done. I shall put those in there. Uh, before I drill out the barrel on the riflings, I shall have a quick look at the chattings. Oh, talking about fat data, says Aviad Madar. Hey, Aviad. Uh, Own TV show I'm watching recently is The Masked Singer Germany and only for one singer, The Astronaut. Lol, I like his voice a lot. I don't know what any of that is, says Frankie. Hi, Frankie, by the way. Uh, I think the reason Warhammer I've chosen now is because the popularity of Game of Thrones, which the tech now to do Warhammer Justice on TV, says Snowman. True. Plus, they just want to, excuse me, they want to just get make money, which is awesome. Uh, Food Bits is in. Holy goodness. What's up, guys? I made it. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Fox, you could argue that Sean's dad was just as bad, but he didn't get any many bad reviews. So be, yeah, but, yeah, I mean, Pertwee Senior was brilliant, was camp. But he was also Doctor Who, so we don't mind him being camp. Sean Pertwee always plays serious roles, but just you can't ham a serious role, but he does. He's made of ham. How's the leg, Foxy? Says Aviad. Uh, leg's fine. Foot's got two broken toes. The thing is, at the minute, right, my left foot is the one with the two broken toes. And my right leg is the one with the normal not broken foot. But because my left foot has the two broken toes... Uh, I'm using my right leg more, I'm, I'm depending on that. So I've already got a funky knee on my right leg, so because I'm depending on it more, 
the fact I've got two broken toes, my knee is killing me. So sitting for more than an hour or two is just hell. I can't win. I can't win. I'm just made of old and fail and falling apartness now. And it's not awesome. I don't need... I, as I've got older, the wrath of Khan makes more and more sense. Don't mince words, Bones. What do you really think? Jim, you need to get your command back. You need to get your shit back. You need to get out of this and get a shit back before you really do grow old. Yeah, when you're young and you watch The Wrath of Khan, you don't really pay attention to the getting old storyline. When you're old, you really pay attention to the getting old storyline. <laughs> yeah. Fox is going to need a cane or a walker scene to pull De Tomaso. Somebody said that, and I said I made a I made a house reference and said I need a I need a bitch in cane. Nobody got the joke, and I'm like, okay, I won't I won't make that joke again. That's going to be too big. I want a smaller one. Hang on. Ah, oh, explodings. Right, there is a smaller one. I knew I had a smaller one. Just wait till you get arthritis all over. Boo. Well, I've got um. I already have a thing in my fingertips where the, the the muscles don't work, so I can't bend the end of my fingers, and it means they're kind of a bit funky like that. But it means when I get older, I'll be more prone to them looking gnarly and getting arthritical. So it's grippo something, something, hippogriff something, I don't know. Uh, Aviad says, Fox is basically a real grade, looks realistic, but weak in the joints. And yeah, I've got lots of surface detail. <laughs> yeah. I need an overhaul. Yeah, pretty much. Says John Paul. Welcome, John. I could never take John Pertwee seriously as Doctor Who because of Wurzel Gummidge. Yeah, well, the thing is, when he was Doctor Who, I was like seven, so I didn't really care. <laughs> didn't really bother me. I just hope Sean Pertwee never gets made Doctor Who because I can't watch. I really can't stand Sean Pertwee at all. I'm sure he's a lovely guy if you know him in real life. It's just, I can't... Something about his voice just annoys me. It's just, it's like he's in constant doing voiceover for adverts mode or something. Drilling a hole, drilling a hole, drilling a hole, bum, 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 super match game. So if you've seen me do this before, drilling out the barrels of these weapons is usually quite simple. Just get yourself a nice pin vise. I do recommend, I've recommended the seam line removal tool before. Uh, from the Games Workshop. That is a tool you will adore with every fibre of your being. It's a brilliant tool. Absolutely indispensable. And you can use it on lots of things. I do actually recommend their pin vise. It's not cheap. It's ridiculously overpriced at like 370 quid or something stupid. It's, it's a ridiculous price. Actually, I've not done bad though. That's pretty much in the middle. A little bit of touch up. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit overpriced, but it is a very nice pin vise. And I'll show you for why in a minute. Uh, but it does come with three separate bits. You get two, you get six drill bits, two of each. So there's three separate sizes, two of each bit. And they actually are specifically designed to be the right size for things like bolter barrels. They're designed to be that size. So like this smaller one here is perfect for a typical bolter barrel. Uh, so what I'm going to do, and dad's going to kill me because I've taken it out of the, the dad holder, but I'm just going to put a little bit of Tamir extra thin on the barrel just to soften up where I've just drilled. Where's my, where's my mark? Soften up where I've just drilled, get rid of any thready bits and make it all nice and smooth. So when you do drill a barrel out or any kind of filing or drilling, handy tip, when you've finished, just run a little tiny bit of extra thin over it. It just gets rid of any little fuzzy bits, any little rough bits, and it smooths the plastic down. So there you go, that's the barrel drilled out. Right, let's have a quick look at chat. Yes, anyway, uh, I, I, I said I need a badass cane. I said I need, a, I need a motorbike and a badass cane, and nobody got that joke. I made a house joke and nobody got it. Yeah, so their pin vice is it's not bad. It's stupidly overpriced, but... I mean, you can go out and buy a pin vice, and it costs you however a few quid, and you get like a, you get packs of drill bits, all different sizes, which is fine. But I just like this one for the Warhammers because there's one thing that sets this apart is that purely that little spinny thing because that sits there, and you can spin it. Now I'm sure you can get pin vices with that, but I've got this thing, and this thing is rubbish because it's got a thing at both ends which is good, 
but when you're trying to drill you're like doing a bit bit of your hot pin vice action what you find is as you're working away this is unthreading so i'm da 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 like this and i, and I guarantee you while i'm doing stuff this will ping off and then you've got this thing gouging into your hand. So whenever I use this thing, the palm of my hand is red raw. So I actually hate this pin vise. It's horrible. But it's got four different sizes. But this has come with the right size bits for... If all you're ever going to use it for is bolter barrels and things. You can get one for a few quid there. It's just a very nice. All the tools that Games Workshop sell, they are very nice tools. They're just... I mean, this is a beautifully nice tool. It's very weighty and it's just... This is worth the money, but that it's very, very nice. It's just overpriced. And the one thing that does disappoint me is you can unscrew that and there's a nice little storage area there, but it's not long enough to fit a drill bit in. I think you could put your drill bits in there. It'd be really handy, but no, it's not actually for that, which is a shame, but you could put secret things in there. You could stash things in there and nobody would ever know what they were. Uh, let's have a look. Do 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 do. So what chat doing? You took a gamble and got maimed by Bramble. Says few bits. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, oops. Where is Paul today? Teaming up. Like and subscribe, Chris. Good question. He's probably asleep. Uh, Richard Gibbs couldn't handle Christopher Eccleston as the Doctor Who. I kept seeing him as the bad guy from Gone in sixty seconds. Thankfully, I've not watched that film because it's not of any interest to me. So. Use a Dremel, says Gross Models. Yes. Uh, uh, if you didn't watch, I think a couple of weeks ago, Chris at Gross Models, he does his Warhamster stream in the evening. He drilled out the barrel of a weapon with an electric drill, with a Dremel. And everybody in chat was going, but it, it got away with it. And he, he got it in the middle and he did it. And to his credit, he drilled it out and it looked mint. And it was like, oh. But somehow, he, everybody, I've never seen so many people clench in one place. Quantum Man says, I think Fox would be good as a Doctor. Doctor, the Daleks are murderising the planets. And the Doctor Fox says, yeah, screw that woo-woo and tell me what's on your bench and what's in your belly. <laughs> yeah, I don't do woo. Uh, let's have a look. Trick photography, it was his 27th take, says Aviad. It was live, says Chris at Gross Models. I'm just that good. Right, I think we are up to date with the chat. If I've missed your question... Uh, do let me know. Remember, if you are putting a question in the chat, if you've not got access, to, if you want to do a super chat, it puts the thing in a colour box and makes a noise. But if you want to put it in capitals, if I do miss your question, if I don't see it, just to put it again in a few minutes later. It's because the iPad's there with the questions, but I'm looking here where the where the work's occurring. I'd say work, minimal work. Uh, right, so it is half past four. I shall get this chap glued together. I shall have a squeak of tea first. Oh. I'll glue this little chap together and then we'll do the stickery stuff so this one needs a 32 millimeter 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 base i've got the bases here for this chap uh, the way i'm doing this if you remember what i said i was doing these are all warhammer conquest things that i'm building because i'm subscribed to warhammer conquest and each month i get a big pack of all the sprues for the things i'm building they're piling up because i've not got time to do any videos for the minute it's gonna be months and months before i get there um so they're piling up and I'm running out of space. So what I'm doing is I'm slowly going through and just building everything. So I can either put it in a, like this, these figures, I can dump them in the skirmish box I've got for Warhammer Conquest. Uh, or the vehicles, I can put them on a shelf or in a box somewhere out of the way. It takes up less space. So I'm just going ahead and building things before I get around to making them. So what I'm doing is I'm marking on them, on the bases, which issue they come from. So I know this is Magazine 29. So I know when I'm getting them out of the box, I need to paint them now. I know which issue they come from. So I'm going to put those back because it's the little one I need. Right, so I'll seal that up and we shall build effect. So let's have a look and see what the good doctor's got in his magic bag. Uh, so it should be fairly straightforward. These aren't particularly complicated to build. These are sadly, a lot of these are from the um, Dark Vengeance set or Dark Imperium set. So a lot of them are monopose figures. They're not multi option poses, they're all monopose. That's going to go on there like that. Okay, nice and easy. So I shall zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing because I'm a long way away. Where's my mark? There's my mark. There's my mark. Hang on. 
Hello, my name's Mark. How are you doing? I should put that there. So it's a bit more in the middle. I shall try and stay on my mark. On oh, my mark. Go. There you go, Dad. I'm doing it right. And I've got me thing in my dad holder. Me glue holder. So it should be fairly straightforward. Get these two little things together. Huh? Does his head have to go in first? No. Good. Put the old extra thins. Yes, yeah, so this plastic is weirdly brittle, but at the same time kind of buttery. The one thing it is quite good at though, good for, is when you do the glue down a seam line and squish it together and the, the plastic ooze comes out and seals the gap. It's actually quite good for that because it's quite soft. So well, it has its plus sides. So a lot of the times when I'm going around a torso and there's a gap down the middle of the torso, I can just squish it a little tiny bit and enough will splooge out that it's not going to be obvious. You don't have to sand it away, or if you do, it's going to be minimal. But it just hides it quite nicely. Uh, I'm just—I'm not even looking at this truck because I'm just winging this now. That's going to go in there like that, to see. Do do do. do. You've got a manly pose of some sort going on. So I'm going to use a bit of Tamiya thick for this. Oh. Aiden Jones, afternoon all. Anyone else tried out the new Warcry game? Very tempted to pre-order, but I just need to wait until the money enters the wallet. Um, well, it's not, it's not available yet. It's only available for pre-order. So I doubt anybody would have tried it. Unless they're an insider at GW, or they're a, a retailer or somebody, an influencer that's got access. I actually contacted Games Workshop and said, hey, I've got a YouTube channel. Feel free to add me to your list of people that you send stuff to pre-release pre so I can do little video builds and re reviews and stuff. Because that would be a great way to, to get content. Uh, get content that's in demand. Because I'm building stuff that people can't buy yet. Uh, and I never heard back, sadly. Because they do do it. They'll send people, they'll have little YouTubers that they send stuff to. To build and paint and review, you know, a few weeks before it actually releases. Because if you want to build hype for your product, have people talking about it on YouTube in advance. You know, if I if I if I if I'm looking at a model kit, uh, is that the right one? Yeah, he's kind of hanging off the edge of the base. As a YouTuber, if I can get a how to build and paint this kit thing up on YouTube before it's been released or around about the time of released, then yeah, absolutely. I'd work for that because it helps me and it's good PR for them. So, But no, they didn't reply back. Oh, Aiden Jones says, my local Warhammer store is teaching the game. You are correct. I stand corrected. I apologize. Yes, some stores are actually doing little overviews of it and showing how to play. So yes, there is that. I forgot that. I forgot that. I am corrected. I'm big enough to admit when I make a mistake. Or when I forget something. Um, but yeah, so I, I contacted them and they never, they never got back to me. So, not to worry, it's not the end of the world. I don't mind too much. Right, so that needs to go on that. Apologies if I keep knocking the camera. Oh, wow, I really can't. Oh, I'm trying to glue with my left hand, the glue thing in my left hand. I really can't control the glue at all when it's in my left hand because my, my left hand has no concept of anything. Much better. Now you can tell this is an officer because he's pointing at the best Tremere Tremere tradition. He's pointing, which clearly makes him an officer. Uh, mm -mm -mm. So look, I really need to get my Raven Guard sorted. As fluffy goats, we're playing thirty k soon. Uh, mm, 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 mm. We'll have to have a clear out before picking Walker up, says Tim Kelly. Too many games and not enough time to play it as is. Beyond Hope says, without wishing to advertise another channel, Tabletop Minions has an inbox review of the Warcry start set. They do, and Dad says, so does Goblin Gaming on their YouTube channel. Yeah, uh, Goblin Gaming have a YouTube It's only a baby channel, it's a little tiny baby channel. Uh, Goblin TV, I think it's just called that on the on the YouTube's. Um, yeah, they have a, they have a quick look at it in the box as well. There's quite a few actually. You find that retailers will have it in advance because they're retailers. How it works. 
So yes, I did I did contact GW. Uh, but they never got back to me. In other news, uh, I also never ever heard back from... Do you remember a year ago? I... Uh, Contacted Medi- that again. Contacted Medifius, the guys that were making uh, the guy, what well, the, the company that makes the Fallout Wasteland Warfare, the beautiful resin models, uh, and they sent me a couple of figures to paint, and I did a quick how to build and paint. It was a mutant Nora and dog meat. It was a blast. They were beautiful little models, uh, and they said they'd, they'd keep in touch and send me some more, but they never did. So I've never done any more of those. In case you're wondering. Uh, I never never got more from them. I also, you may notice that when I started the I started the Diagostini X Wing, I was contacted by a company doing PR for Diagostini, doing like you know marketing and stuff and public uh, distribution. And they said, "Hey, would you like to do it?" So I was like, "Yeah, to go for it." So they sent me the first three issues. I've not had anything else from them since. I have contacted them and said, "Hey, I've not had anything else yet. Do you want to give them a nudge? Am I getting any more? Or is is that it?" Because he said that would be everything. Uh, and I've not heard anything back. I've not had any more issues. So at this point in time, although it's, it would be awesome to carry on with that, and I'm more than not happy to do it and be up for it, absolutely, I've not had any issue. I've not had more than issue three yet, so I haven't had any word. So I don't know if that's continuing past issue three. It's a shame. Right, so that's one little spaceman dude he's built. I shall glue him to the base. Uh, it was a folly over one as well. There we go. He's a I don't quite stand up properly job. So he's going to need. I think Diagostini has pulled out of Ireland, says Brian Costello. Uh, well, the traditional market is Republic of Ireland and UK. But you'll, you have to remember when it comes to part works, you only get. When you see like part works in a store, like a news agents of the British Smiths or whatever, you only get the first few issues in stores, traditionally. If uh, and so, people can be tempted to subscribe. They only really send stores a few issues. After about usually the usually it's like the first three or four issues, so people can see them in store and either go online and subscribe or subscribe with that news agent or wherever they are. Once it's once it's past the first few issues, you'll never see it in store again. Because at that point, if, a, say, a news agent gets no bites whatsoever, if nobody picks up on it and nobody asks the news agent to subscribe, they don't bother sending them anymore. They're not going to get any more. So and a lot of what they do now is not actually through news agents and stuff anyway. I was speaking to somebody about this a while ago. Uh, the majority of their trade now is just directly online. And, you know, people see it online and they go and order online. It's a dying thing that people go to their local news agents and place a subscription. Because traditionally in the old days, what you do is you go to news agents, they'd place a subscription, your news agent would then get a copy every month or the, all the issues, and you go to your news agent and pick them up. Oops, sorry. Uh, but nowadays, they don't really do that. Most of it's people just subscribing for themselves online, so... They, they do a few. They see if uh, the shop gets any bites. If it hasn't had any bites, they just go back to the distributor and they don't get any more. So you won't traditionally see uh, part work magazines after the first handful of issues in any stores. Sometimes they might keep going like the Wait Smiths and stuff, or they might do it in some place, some places, but for most they won't. And, uh, let's have a look. Do, do, do. Have a quick look at chat, and then we'll do some stickers and things. Puffy Guts, uh, Fluffy Guts says, "Gotta, gotta go. Gotta feed my foster kitten and Edgar the crow." I like the sound of you having a crow. That's. I wish we had. I wish we we'd feed all the birds in our garden, and I wish we had crows because then crows can get to know you. And because we, I feed them every day, I think they'd be my best mates. They'd get to know me. And they'd be like, "Yeah, it's that dude with the food." Yeah. Uh, Aviad says, "Screw that! You've got a bane blade to build." Yes. Uh, Brian Costello says, no, I've seen a whole part works in our local like the helmet Star Wars we collected locally. Interesting. I mean, you might see them occasionally. I suppose it depends what it is, though. I know you'll get part works like 
sometimes you get part where it's not say you're collecting something to build because not all part works are build this ship or build this thing some of them are just part works that are just magazines without lots of like you know knitting part works and it's things like that some of them are just part works informational part works and you'll probably still get them and they'll bits here and there Uh, the UK shop you could buy back issues was gone last time I checked. It's down three weeks at least now. I'd have to say with all the Brexit issues it's pulling. I don't know because they're a UK based company. So we shall see. Hopefully not. Hopefully you could be right. I don't know. But like I say, hopefully not because I'd like to actually do that X-Wing <laughs> free of charge because they were going to send it to me. It would be nice. Uh, but they don't just, it, I think that was also available in like, you know, Australasia and places like that as well. So, right. So that's that guy built it, built it. So I'm going to pull the camera back out again a little bit. Uh, because it is time. I'll put him there. It is time to do the stickers. Yay! Sticker giveaway time. Yes. So I'm going to put my glue back over there. <sighs> uh, I need to get the stickers. So this week... Uh, we have some stickers to give away. Now we have some new stickers. Now at this point, remember, by this point of the day, uh, you've been watching for what, coming up to an hour and a quarter, three quarters now, there will be an obvious lag between the video that you're watching with all your eyes and the chat here. So uh, before we do anything, make sure to hit the refresh button on your browser, whatever your browser of choice is, either Chrome or uh, not a very good browser. Uh, so press the refresh button and then drag the slider across to the right hand side to make sure everything's up to date. So refresh and drag refresh and drag while we're waiting very quickly i shall uh, in the chat very quickly post a link there you go just to remind the everybody anybody who wasn't here at the start this channel is now supported by goblin gaming um one of the uk's leading tabletop hobby uh, retailers if you've got a tabletop need you play stuff like warhammer or magic the gathering or pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh or anything that involves playing on the tabletop go to these guys uh, there is an affiliate link that i've just posted in the chat there's also a link below this video in the description as an affiliate uh, every time you place an order i make a tiny little bit of income so if you need to get any of your tabletop goodness from warhammer to anything else from star wars legions it could be uh, fallout wasteland warfare it could be a lot of the different games conflict 47 Oh, God, is that Conflict 47? That looks mint, actually. Loads of games. It's 20% off RRP for pretty much everything. So if you want to save yourself a bundle and also help this channel out and give me a little income at the same time, use that link in the chat or the link in the video below the description. Go and have a look and see what they sell. And place your orders. Get your orders going through. I make a little tiny bit of income. And they are really an awesome dude. So go on and check them out. Go and have a look. Right, you should have all be refreshed by now, I think. Swig of tea. <sighs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the cap on this knife, Fox. I shall put the cap on my knife before I... I can't find the cap. Oh, there it is. Got to go now. Food is ready, says Jamie Bell. Well, thanks for coming in, Jamie. Enjoy your noms. Eat all the noms with all the mouths on your face. All the mouths. So right, there we go. Yes, yeah, so if you want to support this channel, do go and check out Goblin Gaming. Alternatively, if you want, you can become a Patreon, patreon.com forward slash model making group. Uh, and you can support me there. From as little as a dollar a month, you can support me and keep this channel going, keep the lights on. But if you don't want to support me directly, and you'd rather get some benefit for yourself beyond just that, then go to Goblin Gaming. Save up 20% off the cost of your order and make me some money. So we have some stickers. We have a model making guru and we have... Two Goblin Gaming stickers, yes. I've got a whole bunch of these, so we're going to be giving some of these away. Uh, and as always, I'm going to write some words on the back. So, let's think. This is grease proof. I don't know if I can write on the back of these. It's grease proof. So, right. So, uh, let's think of some words. Blart. On that one. This one can be... Uh, let's have... Brap, and this one can be flump. All little onomatopoeic words today. Blart, brap, and flump. There you go. So we've got three stickers to give away today. Uh, and somebody did mail me. Did you mail me with a question? I don't know who mailed me. Uh, what was the mail that I received? Okay, we appear to have a question. Awesome. So I'm going to move the little chat window here. Now the rules of this, as always, you've, you've seen this a million times before. Basically, I'm going to ask you a question. 
Uh, and whoever, whoever in chat gets the answer right first wins a sticker of their choice. Now remember, just because your name appears first in the chat here, uh, so let me rephrase that, just because your name, you, uh, ah, where, wait, stop, T. Right, start again. Just because you appear first on the chat on your telly screen, on your computer screen, um, doesn't mean you're actually first here in the actual YouTube chat. So it's whoever's first here in this chat. This is the chat that YouTube gets. You see your chat according to you. It still has to get to YouTube. So I go off the actual YouTube chat. So just because you're first on your screen doesn't mean you're actually first. So don't panic if you don't win. That's a lot of explanation for nothing, really. Uh, so yes, whoever gets the answer right first. I'm going to ask three questions. Uh, I shall open my email so I can see this question. Ba -ba -ba -ba, ba -ba 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 -ba. Uh, no thanks. Right, so waiting for that's not even the right email account. You spoon, hang on. There we go. Go to my email account, not Ted at eModels. Do, 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 do. Right, so we have a question. So the first question. Everybody ready? Uh, I've got to somehow have my chat open at the same time. Hang on. Oh, this is going to get. Oh, there we go. Right. So the first question. In the original top, this is from uh, Jeremy Schwink, by the way. In the original Top Gun movie, uh, what planes were being flown by the aggressor training pilots Viper and Jester? Go. I don't know if this is right or not. I have no idea. So I'm assuming it's correct. In the original Top Gun movie, what planes were being flown by the aggressor training pilots Viper and Jester? This is from Jeremy. I shall switch over to the chat. Uh, and Osric 9000 is the first person in with A4, which is correct. It was the A4 Skyhawk, according to the answer I have here in front of me. Yes, not whether it's right or not, I have no idea, but it's, let's assume it's correct. So there you go, A4 Skyhawk or A4. Well done, Osric. Would you like a Guru sticker, a Goblin Gaming sticker, or a Goblin Gaming? Would you like Brap, Flump, or uh, Barblart? Which would you like? Which would you like? We shall all sit here quietly and point at you. Respectfully, we'll point at you in silence until you answer which one you want. Ba -ba -ba -dum. Ba -ba -dum. Waiting, waiting. Are you still with us? Oh, Goblin, please. Uh, which one do you want? Do you want Brap? Oh, you, you've done this before. You know how this works. Do you want Brap or Flump? <laughs> Don't make me decide for you because my brain doesn't do things like that. Uh, choose which one. Flump or Brap, whichever you would prefer. Ba -ba -ba -dum. Everybody sit and point. Sit and stare and point quietly, please. Right, Osric, while he decides. I shall give you 10 seconds, then I shall decide. Oh, there you go, Flump. There you go. Nice one. So, Osric, well done. You know what to do. If you win a sticker tonight, send me an email to fox at modelmakingguru.com. I need your name and your address. Put it in the title as well so I can see quickly. Tell me which sticker you won. If you're waiting for stickers already, I do have um, a bag full of stickers and things I need to send out. I usually leave it months and months because it's not easy for me to get to the post office. Right now with broken toes, I've got no way to get to the post office. So you're at least another month away from me sending out any stickers. Yeah, that ain't going, I ain't going nowhere for a month. So well done, Osric. We have two left. Uh, so I knew you were a flump kind of guy. Well done, says Fluffy Guts. Uh... Cy Reynolds says they were actually F5 Tigers and Beyond Hope says uh, in the movie the aggressors were A4s, the Russians flew F5s. I've, I've no idea. I, I've no interest in that movie at all. I wouldn't have a clue. Can't stand Tom Cruise for a start. <coughs> Annoying little man. Uh, right, next question. I've got to think of a question now. So let's put the chat back up here. Okay, so next question. Let's have a thinking moment. Not, don't get many of those. But let's have a thinking moment. Have you noticed how these space movies, a lot of them kind of look like they're falling forward? Like they're leaning forward, like, oh, about to fall over. I know all about falling over. Right, so let's have a think. <sighs> question, 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 question. Cup of tea. 
Um, okay. Okay, I'm going to do a really obvious, really, I'm going to shill for a minute, but I'm going to take advantage of it. Everybody ready? I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it once. Everybody ready? What's the percentage discount off recommended retail price at Goblin Games? Go. On pretty much anything. What percentage do you save on recommended retail price or RRP? Fluffy Gut says, last time I fell over, I cracked my kneecap. I did that and also sprained my ankle. Uh, Red Len is straight in with 20%. Yes, 20%. Well done. Yes. You knew I was going to do it. I've got to do a, a shilly question at least once. So Red Len, well done. Yes, 20 is the right answer. Would you like a uh, model making guru blot or a Goblin Games brap? Let me know. People are still talking about F5s and A4s. I'd stop listening. I have nothing. I have no interest in that film at all. Oh, I hit the nine and naught together. Brack, pl brap, please. Barack, please. I'll give you brap. Uh, Red Len, well done. There you go. So, Red Len, well done. Send me an email to fox at modelmakingguru.com and tell me that you want a Goblin Gaming sticker. Uh, again, if you do have um, stickers waiting to go out and you win more, you need to send me another email. I use my email inbox as my list of how many things I need to send you. So, even if you're waiting for them, I still do it anyway. Uh, right. Uh, one more question. Let's do the, Let's do. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do. I'm going to. I'm going to write a number on the back of my hand. You knew I'm going to do this. I'm going to write a number on the back of my hand. And I'm going to ask you to guess it. So it is a number between twenty-seven and thirty-seven. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Between 27 and 37, what number is on the back of my hand? Whoa, hello, the chat went like that. Wow, let me just scroll back up again. Let's see you've got the right answer. Uh, we have... Thy Creator is the first one with the right answer at 32. So well done, Thy Creator. Another sticker coming to you. Well done. You know what to do. Send me an email, fox at modelmakingguru.com. And they can wend their way to you. Like I say, though, yeah, I ain't getting near the post office for at least another month. Not with these broken toes. So it's not like you've not been waiting for months anyway. I will get them all sent out eventually. I'm just a bit rubbish at that. So I'm going to put these in the bag of things to send out. And we'll get them on the way. So well done, everyone that won the stickers. Uh, commiserations to those who tried but didn't win. You can win another one. Don't worry. We'll do it every week. There uh, we go, right, so I think my creators, and I thought we were getting old and slow. Never, never. Gaz Vicker suddenly says 35, but half an hour later. Good try, Gaz, bit slow there, I think. Slow internet. Uh, right, so that's that done. So there you go, nice stickers out to everybody. Swig of tea. Nyong. Right, what are we on? Uh, coming up to five o'clock, so we've got an hour or so. Doo doo doo. Cyrano says, that's it, I'm collecting that damn badge on my way to Warhammer World next month. Oh yeah, I said you yeah, a badge, don't I? <laughs> yeah, it's an extra hundred miles, mate. I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend it. Uh... David Butch that model says, Don't forget guys, limp or not, I'm holding the fox t-shirt to ransom till he sends stickers out. <laughs> and Cyr Kevin says, How are the toes? Uh, swollen and painful. Throbby. Uh, right, so who's next? So we built the Intercessor Sergeant. Next up we have the Hell Blaster Sergeant. So more of the same. So let's have a look. We need parts. Uh, 10, 11, 12, 13. Oh, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah, we can do that one. We can figure that one out. Let's get this fellow done now. Ooh, put that back on that. Where's my big, big cutters? Uh, that creator says, all right, got to go. See you next week, folks. I see you come in, you get a sticker and you bugger off again. Is that how it is? I see what you did there. Like a panda, eats, shoots and leaves. And there you go. Well, <laughs> thanks for coming in there, creator. You're more than welcome. Uh, somebody mentioned an Orkney uh, placemat. I've got one somewhere. Have I put it somewhere? Is it on screen? I don't know. I'll put it. Uh, my brain's 
blanked. I've got a Canadian placemat as well. Yes. Uh, right. Uh, well, feel better, Duda. I was watching your Eagle Transporter series earlier. The intro cracked me up. <laughs> yeah, I had a moment when I did that. I don't know where that came from. Uh, Gross Model says, you think I've got it bad? I'm waiting for some original artwork that might be worth millions. Yes, it might be. Nim Sindarin says, well, I'm going to head out today. I've got uh, work tonight. Well, thanks for coming in, Nim. Your mug's on it, Fox. No, that's one that uh, Smooth sent me. Oh, I suppose it is, yeah, it's got, yeah, Oakley on it, but... <laughs> Do 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 do. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, what's chat doing now? Uh, Gaz Vicker says, Dan wasn't live. I'd nipped out to shovel fish chips and then their mushy peas into my face. <laughs> uh, Fluffy got. Um, wait. Okay, somebody says goodbye to Fluffy Guts, but I don't think Fluffy Guts is going. It was me that sent it, was it? I got. I don't know who sent me. I thought, okay, cool, thanks, Dad. Yeah, I thought Smooth sent me that. Oh, it was in the big pack from everybody, wasn't it? So I don't know who put what in where. Nah, I think it was. I can't. I can't remember. It's all. It's all blur. I don't know what I did yesterday. I've hurt my foot since then. I blinked. Anyway, uh, did Fluffy got say she was going? I didn't see that. But thanks for coming in. If you are, if you're not, uh, okay. He also has barrels to drill, make him use a power drill. <coughs> Gross style. No. Right, so, so we've got this guy. So what do we want again? Uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. We can do this. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. Which is going to be... 8, 9, where's 8? Again... Uh, I'm not fussed about the bottom of the feet because you're not going to see them. So don't worry about getting any stress marks and anything on the plastic. He's got bits in the middle of his pauldron, so I want to minimise the damage done to those. So again, I'm keeping the nippers away from the pauldron. I'll tidy that up in a minute. Uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So 9, 10. Don't care about the bottom of his neck. That's fine. I can just snip away to that. They're giving me heads to paint now. I'm not a big fan of I prefer helmets rather than heads. Never mind. 8, 9, 10. Do, 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 do. 8, 9, 10, 11. You can tell he's a hell blaster because he's got the huge gun. Uh, one of my neighbours has got the lawnmower out. Fantastic. Do, 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 do. Uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we've got this bit here. Am I on camera? Yes. Okay, snip off there. Uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, there's nine. Niner. Niner, niner, Luftballon. Uh, I think that's all of the parts for him. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. There we go. Yes, lovely, lovely. Clean up time. We only need the barky dog now, says Dad. Yes. I think it might be dead. It's not bark for a few days. Woohoo! Uh, oh, Chris has got to go. Chris at Gross Models. Thanks for coming in, Chris. He's probably already gone. Yes. Sprue on the pauldrons are really annoying, says Adster. Yeah, they can be. I prefer it when it's... Although it's counterintuitive, I prefer it when it's actually on the little bit of trim because it is easier to clean off than when it's on there. Because you do lose a little bit of the roundness. You can sand it back to roundness, but it's not quite the same. So we can go back and trim these. <laughs> Usually GW are pretty good. In the newer kits, they're pretty good with sprue connections nowadays. But you do occasionally get them in dumb places. 
Tempesta Scions putting a sprue, a, a, a gate mark, right in the middle of the little screen on the wrist. Yeah, that's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. A dumb thing to do. They've got like a screen on their arm like that. You can see it. And the nub is right in the middle of it. And you have to you have to figure out how to you have to sand it back and trim it away without removing the edge of the screen. It's like a little recessed edge to make it obviously as a screen on his wrist. You have to it's a bright pain that it's a really dumb thing place to put it. There must have been a better way to do that. Uh, I'm gonna have to use the tips here, I don't really want to, but <laughs> can I get the nippers in there? Yes. Excellent. Do do do. Uh, out of curiosity, but Goblin Gaming stickers aren't only for giveaways, right? I put them on some Yu-Gi-Oh! I'd buy from the store. Um, I, I think I assume they sell the stickers. I don't actually know, to be honest. I would assume they sell them or include them in orders. They were certainly on the front desk when I was there. I said, can I nick some stickers? And they went, there's the Hills Hill Bunch. There you go. <laughs> yeah. I would assume they do. I could be wrong. I don't know. Only one way to find out. Do, 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 do. Uh, they always put a sticker in your delivery, says Dad. Yes. Fox is singing Nina, says Frankie Goes to Hollywood. Uh, what else is chat doing? Nothing at the moment. Okay. Fluffy Guts has been 3D printing crystals for Warhammer today. Cool. Mm -mm. Not jumped on the 3D printing man wagon myself. Uh, two reasons really. One is I've got no space for a 3D printer. Yeah, literally nowhere. But I, I, I don't know. I'd, I'd rather wait till you don't have to spend a week cleaning things up. I think they're awesome, but I'd probably wait till they became absolutely kick-ass. Because I'm lazy, I don't want to do clean up. I don't want to sit there cleaning up printing marks. Now the days when you when like the sort of the high quality printed stuff becomes available to Joe Schmo public for good prices for cheap money. Like anything, you know, what costs a thousand pounds now will be like two hundred quid in five years' time. So. I always like to wait till things aren't quite as expensive. No, I've got that there, I forgot that. You spoon! A nub right on the top of his head. Oh, sorry, lad. Yeah, cut time, I think. I'm impressed with the new cheap resin printers, says Adster. Seems the price is dropping very quickly. Yeah, the thing is, once they become anything becomes ubiquitous, it becomes more realistically priced. Look at anything, basically. Anything that started off as stupidly expensive and then just ended up being dirt cheap. For example, a classic example is LED light bulbs. Like for the last couple of years, you know, here in this house, I've been slowly converting all our light bulbs from incandescent to LEDs. But it's only in the last few years that LED light bulbs, as a replacement for incandescent, have actually become kind of practical. Because it wasn't that long ago that you'd go into the store and you'd see uh, an LED like 40 watt or 60 watt light bulb would be like 20 quid, 30 quid just for a single light bulb. And you'd be like, what? Because they weren't that ubiquitous. But now incandescents have kind of been phased out and they're harder to get and you know, that kind of thing. They just they just drop down the price. It's like anything. It becomes ubiquitous. It becomes more attainable. It's always the way. To the point where now it's actually you know practical to replace all the bulbs in your house with LED. However, it's comforting to know that even with something like LED bulbs, you still get the shonky ones. Like you go in Tesco's and buy the Tesco's own brand LEDs, they last you about they last you about six months. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because they're just shonky ones. And sometimes, sometimes they're slightly badly made so that when you turn the light off, it's still on. Because they've got the funky missing capacitors and things. Yeah. You don't mind. You're only paying like five quid. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, 
Mm -mm -mm -mm. This is a plasma weapon, so I'm going to have to be careful drilling out the barrel. Make sure this is nice and smooth. Is that a nub or is that? No, that's a nub. Sometimes it's hard to see on these which bit is a nub and which bit is actually a little bit of detail. <laughs> I have done that before now, cut off a nub and then realised, oh, it's supposed to be there, it's part of a site or something. Uh, uh, I'm have to clean up. Of course, being a plasma weapon, the seam line goes right through the middle of all the plasma coils. But we can, we can sort that out, not a problem. Not a problem. Easy way to fix that. Get this syndicated. <laughs> I think there's something to talk about now. I have no conversation to discuss. It's probably a bad state of affairs on a live stream, but never mind, eh? You guys are all talking about a uh, um, 3D printers. You're quite happily talking away to yourselves. Jolly good, carry on. I'll just be over here doing this. Oops. I'm hungry now. I've kind of got the munchy times going on in my brain. Okay, so a little bit on that. You see why I'm building for me is slow. I don't do fast building. Because I, I take time to get rid of as many little seam lines and numb marks. I get quite pernickety about it. And it takes me forever. I can't do things quickly. So it's always amusing when people like they get like a squad of dudes and they build them in a in it and paint them in a day. And I'm like, how did how did, it's no, you can't even do that? That's not even real. <sighs> right. So let me zoom in a little bit. Do 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 do. do. Nice me controller zooming. There we go. So we've got a plasma weapon. It's got the rigid bits there, the little ridged plasma coils. Easy way to get rid of the seam line going right down the middle. Get yourself your scribing tool. And when you've adjusted your helmet, so you can see, very carefully and very gently, no pressure, run the scribing tool into each recess. We we'll have to do it a few times. It's important you don't use any pressure because you don't want to gouge the sticky up bits by accident. You don't want to go backwards and forwards again because you don't want to gouge anything else. Only a very thin seam uh, mold line, very thin piece of plastic doesn't require a lot of effort. But this is where a little scribing tool like this comes in really handy. And you know you can get a lot of you out there have got chisel sets and stuff for your gumplers. But this little kind of chisel edged scrabbing tool comes in really handy for that. So what you do is just give it a quick look at the light. It's just about the right width to get just drawn between the two ridged bits and into the gap in the middle. And there we go. That is now from that bit there that is now mold line free because what you want to do you don't really want to be able to having to sand this you can't really sand any of it because if you sand it all you're going to do uh, is just you're going to flatten down all the raised bits there's a little bit of a miss miss mold here i'm just going to try and tidy this bit up yeah you're just going to flatten down the, the raised bits and that's going to look terrible I won't do it here because there's a miss mold and there's a sticky up bit. I'm being very gentle. Sometimes wetting your finger so you can see. There you go, done. So you probably can't see any of that on there because it's not really detailed enough. But now we have plasma coils and there's no mold line down the middle. So just get yourself just a simple scribing tool. This is a Tamiya one. But any tool with a blade like that, that kind of shape, because then you can drag it along. Perfect, perfect. Uh, let's guess what people are talking about. Did Mama Fox have fun shopping on Amazon Prime Day, says Richard Gibbs. She certainly did. 
she bought all kinds of bits and bobs. We got a microwave. I think she bought she bought a new microwave, even though there's nothing wrong with the old microwave, but it's okay, it's a good it's a good microwave. Uh, I need to zoom out again, don't I? I'll, I'll, I'll stay zoomed in while I'm drilling this barrel. Uh, she got some other bits and bobs. What did I get? I did I get anything from Prime on Amazon uh, Prime? I got myself. I decided I was dead clever. I thought to myself, do you know what I should do? On Amazon Prime Day, they had the Logitech C920, the camera that I'm using right now, that you can see me. They had the Logitech C920 down from £85, selling for £29. And somebody actually very kindly mailed me to let me know that. I wasn't going to do it. I wasn't even really bothering with Amazon Prime Day. But somebody sent me that. And I'm like, oh, I'd be stupid not to buy myself a backup camera or a spare or even just a second camera. I'd be stupid to ignore that. I've actually got that right in the middle. That is spot on in the middle there. <gasps> That's fantastic. I don't need to do anything with that. I was going to show you how to centre a slightly off centre hole, but that's just spot on. Brilliant. That's brilliant. That is. I shall give it a bit of a glue. Um, so yeah, I got myself a spare Logitech C920 for 25 quid. Which is brilliant. <laughs> Until I suddenly remembered, I've already got a spare Logitech G920. I've got two. Uh, um, because Dad sent me the one I'm using now. Because my, mine broke. And Dad sent me this one. And somebody else actually sent me a second one. Somebody, you know, not somebody in real life. Um, sent me a, a spare one. So I've got three. And I, I ordered it and was like, brilliant, I've got a spare one. Wait, I've already got a spare one. Oh, you numpty. So I bought myself a camera for dirt cheap that I didn't actually need. Yay. Well done, Fox. <laughs> I might sell it. I don't know. I could sell it and make myself a nice 50 quid. Uh, let's have a look. So, yeah, did any of you guys get any good deals on Amazon Prime Day? What did you get? I did have a look and I nearly bought a lot of things, but nothing really grabbed my fancy. I got the camera and I got... Uh, what else did I get? I think that was... Oh, uh, very excitingly, I got myself a roll of parchment paper. Oh, which reminds me. I've been using this stuff for ages. Oh, I need to zoom in, aren't I? Hang on. I've been using this stuff for my wet palette for ages. And for my actual wet palette, I use, you may recognise this as the plastic tub that the Games Workshop grass tufts come in, the Midland tufts. This is perfectly wide to go into here. It's exactly the right width to fit in there. Just trim it down lengthwise. But I've struggled to find... And these don't exist anymore. I bought, I ordered this, and then it seems like the company just stopped making them. And recently on Amazon, the other day, I found this on Amazon Day. If you're in the UK, it's 10 centimetres width, that's the thing, by 25 metres. This has lasted me for years. This is now available. I've tried it, and it works perfectly. So if, you, if, you, if you've got one of these plastic tubs, if you want to make it a shallow, wet palette, get yourself one of the plastic tubs that say Midland Tufts come in. It's the Games Workshop uh, Tuft Pack. Uh, get yourself one of these and all you're doing then is you're literally just strolling it you're not having to cut the length or cut because normal parchment paper is like you know, a foot wide so it just happens to be exactly the right width so happy times so I got myself that and I got myself a camera that I didn't need so well done Fox well done I never said I was intelligent uh, right let's see what else we got going on mm -mm -mm. Uh, have a look. Right, I need to very quickly go for a great big wee. I did go for a wee before the show. So I'm going to put you on the holding pattern for one minute while I go for a great big wee. So don't go anywhere. I shall be back in a moment.
and I am back. Yes, hello, sorry about that. Quick sudden urgent need to have drunk a lot of tea and coffee today, so it was obviously I'm going to have to go at some point. Uh, where are we on chat? So what have you guys been getting from uh, Amazon then for your deals? Let's have a look. Uh, people talking about 3D printing. I find if you scrape those with a blade, then run some extra thin, they are fine. No scrabbing required, says Kevin Reynolds. Uh, so that's Kevin Reynolds, says Cy Reynolds. Aye, right, possible. Just a different way of doing it. Uh, quite a moment, got one of them scrabby things from my store. Uh, yes, I do have an Amazon store. If you're looking for, um, you know, if you're looking at buying various tools and equipment for your model making hobbies, uh, and they're just generic standard things. Then before you go and buy stuff on Amazon, if you go on Amazon anyway, uh, do go and have a look in my store. Again, the link is in the description below this video. Go and have a look on my Amazon store. Uh, it doesn't cost you any extra, but if it's in there, uh, then order it from that link. It makes me, same, same as Goblin Gaming, it's an affiliate link, it makes me a little bit of income. So if you need to go and pick something off, off Amazon for model making, go and check in my store first. Uh, do, do, do. Uh, Cy, Reynolds, Cy Reynolds says, nice dad, does this mean Fox and me and dad won't have to buy you an emergency camera? Wait, what? Okay. It was Cy and me Fox. Oh, the yes, spare cameras. Yes, it was. Yes. So I've got three now anyway. I bought C920 because of Fox's announcement. Thanks, Fox. My pleasure. Uh... uh what's chat doing? Richard Gibbs says, Subnautica was available at £20.44, uh, 8.44 on Tuesday to find it was the same price on Xbox 2, got Division 2 instead. Cool. Fluffy Got says, well, I didn't buy Prime, but I did get the Bolt Action Banzai starter set this week, somewhere in the post. Uh, let's have a look. Mm -hmm. Snowman says, I never got anything on Prime Day, because Amazon don't take IOUs. Yeah. Quantum Man said, oh, it's something to, I thought it was talking to me, it's talking to Spid. Wash your hands, Fox. I did. I always do. I'm a very good boy. Uh, I'm need to, I'm having trouble reading this. I need to zoom in a little bit. People talking about stuff I don't know about. LD's in. Afternoon, LD. People talking about Alexa, I think, and cyber spying, and I don't know. I've lost track of what you're talking about in there. Remember, if you want to ask me a question, do it in big fat capitals or do a super chat. If you want to get my attention, do a super chat uh, using the little dollar symbol in the chat window underneath the chat window. That'll put it in a coloured box and make a noise so I can hear you. So we've done his weapon. Uh, where's my knife? Where's my knife? I need my knife. Do, 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 do. Where's Colin? Colin's not in today. Where's Colin? Yeah. I hate the ugh, ugh, nubs on pauldrons. I also hate when you get this seam line down the middle of a, a pauldron and you get the sort of lump in the trim. You guys can't see it, but the trim kind of lumps up a little bit and it's a bit more prevalent on these Chinese castings than it is on the real thing, but it's, oh, it's a nightmare to try and fix that. You have to kind of sculpt it out. And it's a real pain to try and get rid of. I much prefer when you get space marines i much prefer space marines that are like the traditional style where it's separate pauldrons somebody tell me because i've not i've not bought any primaris marines that aren't from a a box set so um in the primaris sets now do you get the proper multi-pose kits with separate or, or are all primaris marines these monopose things in standalone sets i haven't actually bought any primaris marines i don't think I can't, remember, I can't remember. Because I do hate this pauldrons moulded in because you get this dumbass seam line right down the middle. You get this misshapen pauldron. It's really annoying. Uh, which one do I want? Oh, I'm all sixes and sevens. I've all gone, I've gone a bit weird here. Right, where are I? File this nub down. 
I just hate having to sort of re-sculpt this trim because it when you paint it, especially if it's like going to be gold, it looks so obvious when it's not quite neat and tidy. But there's not much you can do. I mean, it's literally is it's misshapen. So unless you're a master craftsman, you can sculpt like Leonardo, or Michelangelo, whoever I don't know who who did the sculpting. Michelangelo, Leonardo, one of the two. Unless you've got awesome sculpting skills, it's going to just look like ass. More often than not. Doo -doo -doo. I hate typing on this tablet, it says Spid. Need to get, dude, if you've got an iPad, get yourself one of these. Don't get the Apple one. The Apple one costs 150 quid. This was 15 quid off Amazon, and it's brilliant. Makes life makes my iPad. My iPad has gone from something to have a quick look at Twitter to something I can actually use as a replacement desktop for a lot of things. Uh, how's that looking? Uh, it's not come out bad. It's I've, I've cleaned it up a bit. It's still a bit rough around the edges. I can go in with the scribey scribey. Oops. I can kind of just reinforce this edge a little bit with the scribing tool. Just a little tiny bit. Again, it's not going to be changing anything. It's just tidying up that. So it makes it a bit more obvious when the, when the shade goes on, it'll collect around that edge. Still looks a bit ganky, but there's not really a lot I can do there. A little tiny touch of glue, perhaps. Just to smooth it. It's pretty much as good as you can get. Do 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 do. Uh, let's have a look. Do do do. They are generally monopost fox of a pauldrons or separate from arms, etc. Says uh, Sai about the the primaris. I do hope they release proper Primaris figure kits, though, that aren't just all these like pre molded portions and stuff and monopower. I hope they start to do some more traditional style. I don't want them all to be just this pre mo pre. I don't mind it myself, but it would be nice to not have everything monopose or partly monopose. It's just not as interesting. It's fun, you get figures, it's fun to kind of pose them in ways that they weren't intended. It's because Imperial Guard are completely poseable that I managed to get my Sound of Music dude. If you haven't seen him, it's basically a, an Imperial Guard officer, sergeant, who's basically striking a Sound of Music, the hills are alive, and he's really camp, so it looks brilliant. And that's purely because I can pose the arms and things however I want. Uh, tidy that up there. This one wasn't sober, but it still had the mist mold a little bit. So I'm going to see if I can just scrape in it. I'm kind of just reinforcing the sort of 90 degree edge a little bit to re to sort of rescribe it. It's not perfect. I think once it's once it's painted up, it, again, you, you will see a difference. It won't be perfect, but it's better than having a big bleb. Let's leave that for a minute now. Uh, bits under here. That's my knife. Let's change my glasses again. I'm still figuring out my new glasses. Figuring out which ones are best for when. bits on here like this you see I'm still getting used to the fact that for this kind of work I don't need to wear my big space helmet all the time <laughs> it actually looks better if I don't <laughs> okay, I'm not too fussed about the bottom of the feet don't really care you're not gonna see them just need them to be flat so he's not wobbling Oops, a bit of sandy sandy, a bit of sandy sandy, and let's have a look for the uh, seam lines, mold lines. Yeah, it's my tool. There is, oh, there's a big, big fob off nub there. Hello, big nub. Uh, 
Half an hour we've got. Let's have a quick look at chat in a moment. Let's catch up with you guys. I do find the file quite useful on this plastic. Strange Chinese plastic. Not done much ever. I don't do much. You guys have died shock if I did a load of work in one episode. You'd be like, what? Besides, if I didn't, if I did lots of work in an episode, I couldn't sit and whinge about something, moan about something like an old man for three hours. Let's be honest. You watch this show to talk about food and for me to moan about something, because of course I'm going to moan about something. That's what I do. I'm an old man. Kids today with their hippity hop and their rockety roll. Actually, there's not many. I'm not seeing really any other scene mold lines. Doodle, 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 do, do. Luckily, most of them are actually hidden in panel line detail, which is good. We like that. We like that very much. Thank you, GW. You can do it when you try. See, you put your effort in. Okay, so that's there. Give it a quick bit of a sand. Smooth off that bit that I glued. Okay. Yeah, it's not looking brilliant, but it's better than it was with the misshapen doobie doos. Uh, right, let's have a look at what the chat's doing. Do 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 do. Uh, Butch, that model says nothing from Amazon. Let's start again. Nothing from Amazon, but spent a thousand pounds on the e-scooter and new tablets and a chair for the man cave move. Yes, chairs, tablets, and all kinds of goodness. Fluffy Gut says, oh my god, did you just assume your own gender? I don't get that meme slash joke slash... There's a picture with a Bane blade and it says that. I don't get, I don't get what that reference is. Uh, the shin front armour plate is also separate, which can be handy, yes, on the, on the Primaris. Do, do, do. Uh, Spid says, no, I can't afford Apple. It's an ancient Android, does okay, but the auto cortex refuses to learn words and inserts its own. <laughs> the auto carrot, even. Yes. Uh, one of the things I love about act bolt actions, says Fluffy Guts, they come in many parts. A lot of the a lot of the figures for Warhammer do. It's just this latest stuff, this, this mono pose, which I, it looks great, but it's just it's not as much fun. Uh, do, 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 do. Sai says, there are new Primaris on the way at the end of August, a couple of new infantry kits, some new hover bikes, a command squad, new lighter armor dreadnought, and a new transport. Woo, hover bikes. Red one, says Dad. Snowman says, got to go have a nice evening. Thanks for coming in, Snowman. Uh, I've got solid info. They are on the way, third week of August. Nice one. Do, 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 do. See, the problem I've had, the problem I've got now with my specific army is that I did a load of uh, Primaris Marines. Also, by the way, how's my audio? I, I keep getting no... It tells me that I'm going into the red every now and then, but let me know if I'm too loud or too quiet. I got some. Uh, I got a squad of Primaris Marines, and I painted them like a Zaku. Unfortunately, I've got no idea how I did that, because I didn't make a record of what colour I painted them. So, uh, I'll have to do a different colour scheme for the next lot. Woohoo! Uh... Cy Reynolds says, they are, he says there was a thing on the Warhammer... Uh, community there was a video regarding primaris lieutenants yeah it's actually quite funny about two weeks old by now uh they are blurry however i get his intel from a couple of the heavy metal painters that he chats to cool doodle dude talk about dave's man k fox insider information for our 40k needs yes sound fine to me jolly good awesome i just didn't know because i don't quite trust the uh, the volume the vu meters on the uh, stream labs i think sometimes it tells me i'm clipping when i'm not you sound frisk as a fox, says Connor, man. Squirrel in our garden this morning. We haven't, haven't seen the fox in our garden for a long, long time. Squirrel's around, though. As always, chewing on the seed and raiding food here and there. Cheeky little thing. 
fighting with the magpies. He likes fighting with the magpies. Do 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 do. Hey, mini mini. I'm hungry now. As soon as I finish this show, I'm going to go downstairs and make me dinner. Oh, yeah. Burger and chips and beans, or I don't know, maybe beans, maybe spaghetti hoops. Or we do have some spaghetti and sausages, Heinz. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know which one we're going to have, though, because I don't know which ones we've got enough of. We've got spaghetti hoops. I love hoops. Uh, where's, me, where's, me, where's my tool? Where's my, my tool? Again, if you've got a seam line going down the gap between the, the main chunk of the backpack and the little sort of thrusters on the side or the vents, you can actually get in between them and get rid of the mold, the seam line that way, the mold line with your scrub tool. Good for you know, good for restoring things like grills and things where we've had to sand them a bit. Maybe they've gone a bit funky because you've sanded them smooth or something. Do <laughs> Mungry now, Mungry, Mungry, M U N G R Y, Mungry. I've got the munchies. I almost don't want to have to spend, you know, twelve minutes making the burgers and the chips and stuff because it's far too long. I just need to put it into my face now. How anybody expected to, you know, cook for ten minutes? It's ridiculous. The 21st century should be able to press a button and food should be in front of me instantly. Just like appear as if by magic. <laughs> Can't believe really still have to do things like cooking. I mean, it's nonsense. This is not the future I signed up for. Also, you know, flying cars, silver outfits, meal in a pill, that kind of thing. None of that's happened yet. Do 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 do. Uh, those backpacks are asked to prep, especially for display quality models. I curse them. Uh, no, I don't mind them really. They're not that bad. Then again, I'm not, I'm not working to like you know museum display quality here, but I've lost me. I keep putting it, there it is. Every time I put something down, it goes away and disappears and vanishes, and it's most frustrating. The thing about me is I haven't got the patience to do proper museum display quality, I don't think. Because I haven't got the skill. Well, I haven't got the skills, let's be honest. But I haven't got the patience. I'll do I'll do I'll go beyond tabletop quality, obviously, but um I'm quite happy just to go for ooh, tabletop quality for my army or, you know, better quality for for these, perhaps. But I wouldn't say it was display quality. Yeah, I can see if you're going for display quality and literally moving every seam line, get rid of all the seam lines on these little button packs and things on the side. Yeah, that would be arse. I don't do that. I don't do that. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> then again, that's why you've got golden demons and I haven't. <laughs> yeah, that's why I would never enter such a thing. I haven't got the skill or patience to paint to that level. It's not well, I didn't want to do that. It's not my bag, man. Uh let's have a look. Uh, Christopher Porter says, vegan food doesn't sound like good food. Sam Reynolds says, depends what the vegan food is. What have you got, Fluffy? Fluffy says, I love vegan food. Most folks won't even try it and say they don't like it without trying it. I'll eat anything. I'll, I'll eat any food. I have no no problem with any kind of food. My simple rules are, if, it, if I don't want it to have eyes. It can't have eyes and it can't be able to look at me. Other than that, I, you know, if it's got eyes or a face, I'm probably out. Other than that, I'll eat it. Uh, where's the, there's no, where's the, where's the nub? Where's the, where's the, uh, there it is, there it is. 
I have nothing against any kind of food. I'm not, I'm not, and will never be a vegetarian or vegan. But you know, doesn't mean I'm not going to sit there and eat vegetarian or vegan food. It's food. I don't care what it's made of. Does it taste nice? Yes, then fine, I'll eat it. It's not a problem at all. Don't really care. Can't beat some good veggies anyway sometimes. Sometimes I get the munchies that just want to wolf down some veggies. Nothing wrong with that. Having like a bag of... Uh, bag of carrots or sugar snap peas or stuff or something like that in the fridge as a snack standby can be really good sometimes be like, oh I've got the munchies but I don't want to eat like a load of really stuff that's gonna make me fat so I'll munch on some carrots I like carrots I like veggies sometimes if I go into like a grocery store like a grocery store where they've got you know green grocers whatever where they've got all the veggies and stuff. It's a bit like when I walk into a Warhammer store. I go, oh, look at all the, oh, look at, oh. And I just imagine putting them all in my face. And they all taste a million times better in my imagination than they do in real life. And then I walk out with, like, just tons of all the things. And then I eat them all. Right, is that a nub or is that, that's a nub. Right on the collar of his armour there. Hard to see, but it's there. I have no problem with the, anybody's dietary choices. I take no issue with that. I'd never tell someone how to... It's not, it's not for me to tell someone what they should eat or not eat. That's just none of my business. None of my business at all. Uh, where's that number? There's a big number there. Haven't had a burrito yet, have to say that by the way. Despite the discovery, well, right next door to my local games workshop, my Warhammer, local Warhammer store, is a burrito place, I discovered. I'd never noticed it before because it was right next to the Warhammer store, so why would I notice it? Um, so I went online, and it's like, yeah, we don't deliver to your postcode. I'm like, oh. So I went into the store and said, hey, do you deliver to my postcode? Because the website said it doesn't, but I deliver And he went, yeah, we do. I'm like, okay, right, I'll, I'll, I'll order them next time. And now, I'm, obviously right now, I can't get there now because I'm going nowhere. So I may have to, at some point, try a burrito. Knowing my look, I'll get all excited, plan it, get one, and they'll be like, yeah, we don't deliver there now. And I'm like, oh, come on. So the man in the store told me, So we shall see. <laughs> see what chat is doing. What time are we on? Quarter two. I'll have a quick look at chat in a second. See what you're up to. Do, do, do. Scribing tool again. Scribing tool time again. Yes, I, I compared to like, say, some of size display quality bills. This is probably shoddy and clunky and quickly built painted. But <laughs> yeah, I've not got the patience. Nor the skills, let's be honest, for that kind of intense paint job just not at all not on individual figures anyway do let me know if my head keeps coming in shot by the way because i don't actually know i keep feeling the camera on my hair but i don't know if my head's actually in shot uh, that's that needs to be trimmed a little bit of trimmage on that Nicely trimmed, that is. Right, so I'll have a quick look at the chat. I've only got his head to do now. Uh, it's the mold line that runs over the control panels and up under the thruster bell thing. Yeah, we were talking about the mold lines on the backpacks. Uh, Candygram says, most of my meals are vegetarian. I had to cut way, way back on meat intake. Vegetarian vegan food is like any other food. Some is delicious and some isn't. 
Christopher Porter says I used to work in a museum as a curator. I always wanted to display model with a display with load of. I'll say that again. I'll start again. I used to work at a museum as a curator. I always wanted to do a display with a load of 135th scale tanks being disassembled, but I never got the chance. <laughs> Fluffy Guts is having tomato and red pepper enchiladas. Woo! Uh, David Butch, that model, says, uh, having seen the range of corn stuff at work, I would rather stab myself in the eye with a pencil than eat it. He is a butcher, let's be honest. He's not going to be in favour of the non-meat stuff. I don't know why, though, Dave. It's just veggies. It's nice. Corn's all right, actually. It's not too bad. It's a bit like eating halloumi, in a way, but not halloumi-flavoured. Uh, Sai says, there's a company called Beyond Meat. They do soy-based replacement products. Their burgers and sausages are amazing, and I'm a true carnivore. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. Oops. The Cyrell doesn't like the corn is glorified fungus, but mushrooms are fungus. And mushrooms are nice. I say I don't, I don't really care. I don't really care what. When I've got a food in front of me, I don't care what it's made of, as long as it's not bad for me. Uh, as in, you know, dead, deadly and horrible and toxic. And it's not got eyes, it's not got a face. I don't care. People can eat what they like. Doesn't bother me. But let's keep in mind, Dave is a butcher, so yeah. He's obviously going to be uh, more in favour of the meaty side of the <laughs> of the fence, I think, on that one. Bless him. But I'm a car I'm a carnival through and through, but I'd, I'd never... I'll eat anything. All I care about... There's only two things I care about in food. Is it nice to eat? And is it Bacon. There's two. There's only two food types to me. There's bacon and not bacon. And as long as it falls into one of those two food groups and tastes nice, that's fine. That's my colour wheel of food is two. It's got half of it's bacon, half of it's not bacon. That's it. That's all I need to know. Don't care what it's made of, where it comes from, what's actually in it. No interest at all. Don't care. What does it taste like? That's all I need to know, really. That's why I've always been kind of quite happy to try new things because I just really don't care. I really don't care what's in something. You know, I've eaten all kinds of bits and bobs over the years. And I'm quite happy to try. It's like, you know, do you want to try this? What is it? It's scorpion. Yeah, I don't care what it is. I'll eat it. And there you go. What's this? It's kangaroo. Brilliant. I'll try that. Here's some insects. Yeah, I'll eat those, I'll eat those mealworms. Not a problem. Do I care? Not really. I don't really care what they're made of. Does it taste nice? Yeah, they were all right. They weren't that bad. But no, I, I don't really care. Right, I think that's got rid of the number off the top of his bald head. Thanks, Games Workshop. I'm sure he's not got covered in scratch marks, no. Mm -mm. Little tiny seam line down the middle. But very, very tiny. I think this is knife blade time. Knife blade time. Sometimes if a seam line is very, very delicate and tiny and it's a very small area, or I don't want to obscure all the details like the side of the head or the bits on the side of the heads and stuff. I'll use the knife blade just because it's a bit more. Yes, it's more flexible and might scratch and scrape, but for tiny little areas, it's a bit less nuclear option. Like for the things on the ears, the bits like that, where I, if I use the scribing, the seam line remover, it's going to potentially soften all the details and get rid of them all. So, quite happy. Right, so let's get this guy glued together, and then I think that'll do us today. Take my headset off because I don't need it to glue a guy together. Time for the glue! Eee, right, so we need to get another base out. Base! How low can you go? Osric9000 says he had fried grasshoppers while on uh, holiday. Tasty, yep. Well, somebody sent me, uh, I forget who it was now, somebody sent me crickets, didn't they? So I had crickets earlier in the year. Somebody sent me a pack of crickets, they were nice. I've had mealworms, human mealworms, or human edible mealworms. They were most pleas. Most pleas. Uh, 
Mealworms tasted a bit better than crickets, I have to be honest. Crickets have a certain certain mustiness to the flavour, which was which was all right. It was a, it was a bit weird. Not 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 nothing to do with the fact they were insects. It was, not, it was just the flavour was a bit a bit musty and dusty. I was like, eee, it's all right. Don't mind too much. I need my visor again. I can't actually see all the fine details. I suck at seeing. Uh, where's the joint? I can't remember. It's a good thing when you can't remember where the joint is, I suppose. You can't see where the joint is. There we go. Uh, let's have a look. So we have the gun. We have the backpack. Backpack, you say? We have that goes in there like that. Mm -mm, let's get the gun in first because that's not going to go in like a nice boy. Do it on camera, dear. That's going to go there. Okay, so that's going to go in there, and then that is going to join in that end like that. Okay, that's going to be fairly straightforward, I think. Doodle -doo, doodle -doo, doodle -doo, doodle Yeah, I don't care what I don't care what food's made of. Although having said that, I'll never ever buy a Linda McCartney stuff. It's bloody awful stuff. Linda McCartney vegetarian sausages and stuff. God awful. They're really terrible. And that's nothing to do with them being vegetarian food. It's to, to, to do with it being terrible food. They're just horrible, horrible things. Do, 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 do. Get that in there. That goes in there. And that goes in there like that. You'll see. I'm going to need tweezers for this, I think. Need some tweezing action. Get in there, lad, get in. There we go. Lovely, there we go. Persuade it in. Sometimes with these kind of like joint poses, it's good to just get one piece on on one side and then finagle the other bit in. It's one of the reasons I hated the Tempesta Scion so much. Imagine doing that, but you've got two pieces for each arm. Yeah, that's why I hate the Tempesta Scions. I love the models. I'm going to look forward to painting them. They look fantastic. To, to build them, I hate every moment of it. Now, you could be saying, why have I painted that? How am I going to paint the chest? Why have I glued his arms on when I've got the chest to do? Well, two reasons. One, if you paint him first and then glue the weapon on, you make a, have the risk of messing up your paint job especially where there's some finagling to be done. But two, it's actually really easy to get to the bits to paint the Aquila. It's not hard. There'll be some bits of the Aquila I can't get to, but they're usually the bits that I can't actually see. Also, I can paint the Aquila first before I paint the weapon. So I can then get to the weapon quite. So it's not actually that hard. It's not that hard at all. Stick his head on. I have a habit of making the people I build look to the left hand side, look to their, to their right, sorry. I don't know why, but they always look to the right hand side. So I'm going to make this guy look into the right, uh, to the left. I'm confused now. He's looking that way anyway. I got my scions out and I was like, why are they all looking to their right? <laughs> I kind of tried to vary up, but they all seem to be looking that way. I don't quite know why. I'm also not on camera. I kind of made a boob and they all were looking. It's like, oh dear. They're all looking in the same direction. It's really weird. That was the wrong glue. Never mind. Let's get that on there. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Meaty looking head man. <laughs> yeah, so sorry, these wouldn't be to your display quality, but uh, they'll be fine. There we go. That's that one. So the thing about these monopose figures where the customization disappears is you don't then have the option of adding all the accessories and stuff. Sadly. Uh, Simon Reynolds says, uh, are you still planning on doing the X-Wing part work? Um, I'm guessing you weren't here when I talked about it earlier. Um, I've done the first three episodes. I was approached by a company who do PR for Diagostini and said, would you be interested in a collaboration? We'll just send you all the magazines. And I'm like, absolutely would I be interested in that? You're damn straight I would. I'd love to do that. Uh, and they said brilliant and they sent me the first three issues and that's the last thing I heard well not the last thing I heard that's the last thing I had from them I mailed him about two weeks ago and said hey hey dude um, I've not heard from you or Diagostini 
Uh, am I going to... Is this actually happening? Because I've not had issues 4, 5, and 6 or anything like that. I've not... It's been a couple of months now. And he said he'd find out, and I've not heard back. So... If they send me the next issues, then we shall carry on with that. If they don't, I guess I'm not. Bit a bit gutted if that's the case, because it would have been nice to do that. Basically, a thousand pounds worth of, of build uh, without me actually paying for it would be really nice. But it also looks like it's going to be a fun, good build as well. But yeah, I asked them to give him a nudge. The difficulty is when they set me up, they don't set me up with an account on the Diagostini website that I can go in and log in and look at as normal, like you normally do. You register and stuff. I've already got an account there for the other thing, but so I can't just log in and see where they are. I... Uh, as far as I know, I'm just on the on the Diagostini system and it just says no charge and they're supposed to send me stuff. But the first three issues I got was some packing company in, down south, a company that makes cardboard boxes. So God knows where they came from. So I don't know. I've not heard back from him and I've not heard from Diagostini directly and I've not had issues 4, 5 and 6. So it would be really awesome, but that's down to them if they don't want to send them to me. If they don't send them, I can't do them. Right, so have a quick look at chat and then we'll call it quits. Uh, where are we? Do, 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 do. Just Django says, I've finished the RX's head, backpack and arm, which I have too much fun putting into a middle finger pose. Yeah, you're always going to do that. Uh, sweet veg go with sweet, well with a sweet chili, uh, I'll start that again. Sweet veg go well with a chili sauce, it says Fluffy Guts to Candy Graham. And Candy Graham says, I've never tried this, I shall try this, let's make some this week. Mm, 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 mm. Eon's car says right I'll be going bye thanks for coming in Eon's car see you next week uh, doo, doo, doo. yeah I didn't get in till 5 you didn't even say hi and that's a crying shame let's hope they get back to you I didn't I didn't notice that you'd, when you'd came in I noticed you'd come in I just didn't see when I'm not always looking at the chat yeah so I'll not hope back there's some Spanish PR company that approached me I'm like yeah I'm up for that I mailed him and said hi I've not heard I've not had the next ones do you want to find out what's going on and I've not heard back so We'll see. I say if, if they don't want to send them to me, if it's not, I can't imagine it's anything dodgy going on, but odd. We shall see anyway. Uh, Fluffy Gut says, I've twisted Scott's arm and he's making a bolt action tank. Awesome. What scale is bolt action? Is it what, 28 mil? It's kind of similar to Warhammer scale, but not heroic scale. It's 28 mil, I think, isn't it? So tanks are about this big. Yes. Right, that is us just done anyway. What I shall do, before you go, before you go, <laughs> I'll, give, I'll show you some sprues, just for a minute. I'll show you inside the box. Because this thing is a mighty beast. I did get the Bane Blade, yes. When I'll get round to building it, I do not know. I'll move the camera a bit. Yeah, I haven't got much. Oh, I can't move the camera. Hang on. There we go. Let me make sure it's all focused for you. Hang on. Changing glasses. Moving now, sir. Oh, Roger. Moving now. Doodle -doo 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 -doo. Focus. Just about in focus. Yeah, so I did get the Bane Blade. Look at the size of this. Look at the size of this box. It's just... It's, just, it's, that, it's that tall. All the things in there. Many things. Many, many things. The size of that, that's just what well, that's the fixed turrety part. The, uh, the turret goes on top of that. It's like it's got sponsons on the side, and on top of the sponsons is a turret. But the sponsons already got guns. You see the engine bits. So, the, yes, the, the Bane Blade does have an engine to answer that question earlier on. It has an engine in it. All kinds. There's loads of figures with it. Uh, but when I do mine, like I say, I will do mine as. I think I'll do it as Death Core. Death Core of Krieg. There's some stands. You can see there you got the uh, the sides of the side armor for the wheels for the tra the tracks go. So look how big they are to an eight foot tall space marine. So you can see how big this thing is supposed to be in real life. The size of the tracks they're huge, and of course the tracks are covered in aquilas and skulls because of course they are. So I'm really going to look forward to building this puppy. It's going to be huge. It's going to be great fun. Uh, and I don't know when I'm going to do it, but hey, I can look at the box longingly for the next few months, years, lifetimes. Big, thick book, look at that. Massive thick book, lots of decals, yes. And there you go, there's a Bane Blade, look at that. Delightful vehicle. 
Yeah, I shall I shall put that away and stop looking at it longingly now. I've got too many other things to be getting on with, Fox. Don't start messing about now. Uh, I think it's 20... Here's a, here's a question, though. How much does it cost to play in-game? It is. If you want to play it in-game? It doesn't have a points count, but it is 28 power. I don't know about power, so I don't know what that means. I assume like a figure is one power. So, yeah, 28 power for a single vehicle. It's a Titan Killer. Yeah, that's why it's called the Titan Killer. Anyway, quick last look at chat. Beyond Hope says, uh, with your minis, would you mod consider showing how to modify poses or add weapons? I wouldn't have a problem doing that, but I've never done it. Um, the thing you have to remember with me is I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm not a builder. I'm a painter and weatherer. -er. I actually hate the building process, so I'm, I'm not the person that's going to sit there and start changing arms. I might, you know, swap arms around on a figure where I've just got to take an arm off and put a different arm on. Or like on this thing here. On this thing here, uh, it's a Gene Stealer vehicle, and it's a Gene Stealer person in there, but I've put a Tempestus style helmet on it, so it looks a bit like a bandit from Borderlands. But that's about as far as my modding skills go. I don't I do not do modding and cutting around, because I, I suck at it. I, I, I hate the building part. I'm in it for the painting and the, and the weathering. So, uh, But if I ever do, I would obviously film it. But I'm not. I'm not, that's not what my experience is. Uh, 28 millimeter says fluffy. Yeah, I thought they were 28 mil. Uh, some of the uh, the bolt action stuff looks mint. Uh, Jesus, that's a unit and a half. Says Dad. All you need is 48 hours in each day. Yes, that's fantastic. To Bill says Dad. Uh, the bane of blades. Goodness, chopped as heck here. Uh, I could happily show it. I'm just not a fan of making videos. Says Sai. This might be the modding thing. Uh, let's have a look. You want to know the total points till it's built, or you won't know the total points it's built, says Fluffy Guts. Sculpting, reposing, I've done a lot of. Yeah, I'm, I'm sculpting and that kind of hard, what I call the hardware stuff, like sculpting, reposing, modding, and chopping things together and sticking them together. I just, it's never been my thing because I'm not that kind of, I'm not that kind of model maker. I'm, I'm, I'm a painter. I'm a lover, not a fighter. Yeah, yeah. I, I always say you're either a builder or a painter or both. I'm a painter. I'm not a builder. I will build things as they come out of the kit. I might do a little bit of modding here and there. I did do that AML 90 with the Warhammer stuff. If it just means sticking things on like greebles from somewhere else, that's about as far as I go. I've just not. I mean, I might do one day. It's just it doesn't float my boat. Anyway, uh, the basic points value is 390, says Fluffy Guts, for a, for a, for that tank. Yeah, that's, that's about the same as an Imperial Knight. Wow, it's massive. Anyway, it is six o'clock. It's four minutes past six. I shall leave you to the rest of your evening. Don't forget, as always, uh, if you want to help support this channel, you can do. You can support me on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash model making guru. Uh, you can support me from as little much as a pound upwards. Whatever you want to spend, that's fine uh, each month. Uh, all support is greatly appreciated. This is what I do for a living. That is my income, basically, through Patreon. So any support is greatly appreciated. Uh, if you don't want to support me directly, you can support me when you're buying your Warhammer stuff or any gaming, uh, tabletop gaming stuff that you need to buy. Go to Goblin Games. They support this stream. There's a link in the description below. Uh, and I'll put the link in chat again just one last time. Uh... If you follow the link in the chat that I'm putting there now, that's my affiliate link. So every time you go there, you get your big savings on everything you order, uh, up to 20%. Uh, it's 20% off Games uh, for Games Workshop, 20% off Malifaux, 20% off Conflict 47, and up to 20% on many other things. Lots and lots of savings, but you also it makes me a little bit of income every time you order through that link. So use that link, save it to your favourites, and that also helps give me a source of income, because this is what I do for my living. So every little helps. Um, but yes, don't forget, of course, uh, Chris over at Gross Models, 8pm tonight is his Warhamster Sunday stream, where he'll be working on, I think he's still working on his Mega Knobs. Mega Knobs! I'll try and join in the chat if I'm not eating my tea. So do go along and watch that at 8 p.m. at BST, so in a couple of hours from now. Uh, but until next time, I shall see you uh, later in the week. The first paint video for this is up in Patreon at the minute for Patreon uh, for Patreon supporters. Uh, it should be released probably, I think, next Wednesday or Thursday for everybody else to watch. So the first episode gets to that point. I'll be filming the outlining painting tomorrow or Tuesday. So stay tuned for that. And then as soon as that's done, we can crack on back with the Cesarbi then. And then once that's done, we're into the Millennium Falcon. Yay! But until next time, I shall say thank you very much for watching to all of you. Do take care of yourselves. Until next time, go make something awesome like all of these. Go be awesome. You there, be awesome. It's like I've got a really long finger. Look, that's like a 13 foot long finger. <laughs> and I shall say, until next time, adios amoebas. <laughs>